Today's episode is brought to you also by Liquid Death. I'm grateful for them. Oh, I, um, man, it's nice to have some relief from the snow. It burnt my skin. I didn't know snow could burn your skin up. And it can, even though it's a, a cold feature, it can burn you. Um, anyway, uh, today's guest is a young man out of California, and he is, uh, he's just hilarious. You know, he's very outgoing, vivacious. He makes a lot of beautiful um, material out there on Instagram, TikTok. Um, he just, he's the viral video, you know, he's... Are you that guy? That's when you see, you just, that's his new tour. Are you that guy? Um, and he'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Um, you know, he's a comedian. He's a, uh, he's just a, he's a damn just energy man, you know? And he puts it out there in ways that people uh, like to laugh at and, and with. And I'm one of those people. Today's guest is my friend, Mr. Trevor Wallace. And let myself all my shine that light on me. I'll sit and tell you my stories. Shine on me. And I will find a song. I've been singing just for me. Yeah, because I'm supposed to head back to, I was supposed to head back to LA tomorrow, uh-huh. or t- tonight actually, but my flight got um, canceled. Yeah, it's a lot going on out there. Yeah. I, I always thought Nashville was like 72 minimum. Yeah. Oh yeah, it gets brisk, man. We just, I actually just went sledding this morning actually. Did you? Yeah. How was it? I feel like doing anything, like I went bodyboarding like a couple of weeks ago. Insane. Just great. Bodyboarding and what is it? Just what you- body. Water, body. Okay. Waves so you were out in just, the uh what are you talking about in what bot what uh ocean. What ocean were you in? Santa Monica? Pacific? Atlantic? <laughs> Which oh, one is that oh, one? <laughs> I'm not good with geography. Bro, that's Pacific, man. Pacific, yeah. yeah, yeah that's yeah. an easy one. Yeah, I know my rights from my lefts and north, south, and east and west, but but oceans? Mm mm. That's an easy one. I don't one, know man. that one. Oceans uh I'm trying to think how many I know Oceans ones. eleven. Yeah. Good I know, movie. O- but could you name eleven oceans, you think? <laughs> I think I can name 11 cities that have oceans. <laughs> Huntington, Hermosa. <laughs> that's cheating, bro. Santa Monica, Venice. You riding a lot of that same ocean, man. Yeah, that's true. I met some people the other day from Bahrain. Where is it? That's what I was like, what? Yeah. I was like, are you guys like. Where'd you, you meet know? them? Huh? Where'd you At meet the them? airport. Oh, yeah. And I was like, are you guys. And I didn't even know what to ask them. Like, are you right. guys. Right. What's offensive and what's not? Or just like no, not even ethnic, e- ethnical. I, I was just gonna to be relate. like, "Are you guys like?" I didn't even know what lost. to say. Yeah, yeah. Like, are you Can lost, you lost at the you, airport? Do like, you believe in magic? You know what I'm saying? I didn't know what to. Ask. I feel like they would. Where is that, by the way? That's what. See, that's where I was. Even where the thing was. What coming. was it called again? That's all of that was. <laughs> see, all of that was happening for me at one time. So it was yeah, like, like, I'm gonna need you to write it on a piece of paper. <laughs> yeah, they're like, we're from Bahrain, and I was Bahrain. like, Bahrain. Kind of sounds like Bahrain. It kind of sounds like, Did you meet like, Joe, yeah. Joe Byron? <laughs> Bing bong. It sounds like uh, Bah Humbug, too. What is that? I know what it is, but I don't know what it is. Bah Humbug is like a famous saying from bah humbug. Uh, Christmas. That's yeah. like when you stub your toe and you're like, Bah Humbug? Or, uh, or somebody like stole some shit for you, you're like, Bah Humbug. Oh, uh, Bah They humbug. got the PlayStation. Bah Humbug was like a famous saying for people that I think weren't, uh, were angry, like if, yeah. Like if your grandfather, like if you asked him for a dollar and he didn't want to right. give you a dollar. They'd do anything but cuss back in the day. Yeah. Anything yes. but cuss. But they would also like hit people. And you're like, I feel like there's a better alternative. You could just cuss. But they would hit him with a can. Like, a, oh, are we talking yeah. seniors, you mean? Seniors, yeah. Are we? T- yeah, seniors, I think we'd. De- yeah, you, uh, I remember my girl, uh, I had a girlfriend's uh, grandmother one time just slap me right across the face. And her grandfather slapped me. He After? Just, Huh? After no, the alley no. oop, he's like, "Fucking in my turn, <laughs> batter, batter, swing, swing." You know, different, uh, different. Yeah, that is weird. What did you do to it deserve was, that? Oh, made love to their granddaughter. I think that's <laughs> enough. That's usually what it is. I think so. If I'm, a, especially, and she was, she was very attractive, and 
if I'm the grandfather and I have an attractive granddaughter, this may sound way <laughs> creepy. Or just any granddaughter, yeah. right? Would you- and somebody's making love to her, uh-huh. I think I'm not going to be. I think it would be hard to be really stoked about it. But yeah, because you were too excited, then it's weird. Then it gets a little Pornhub category ish. Grandpa gets excited over prom day. <laughs> right, You're right, like, where's right, this right. going? I'll watch. Yeah, Grandpa's just by the door with like yeah. a big, like, we, uh, listening thing yeah. or something. You got a red solo cup with a string in it. Yeah. Would you be the guy meeting like a daughter and then like at prom? Are you shaking the guy's hand hard? Or are you kind of just like, what's up, man? Good to see you. Oh, dude. I, I feel like in the movies, they're always trying to be like intimidating, but like. Oh, I was so, I remember wasted at one time at prom. We, I went to pick up my date, right? Mm-hmm. I was too drunk. There you go. Uh, you so, driving or no? Uh, Probably floating uh, a little bit. I was definitely You're just man. on one? A couple was, Mad Dog 2020s? Just no, feeling I was it? Mario Kart. Bro. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was kidding. All different colors. You know? Red, white, yeah. and blue. Yeah. I was like, damn, why am I a mushroom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not doing real well. So you're picking her up. Oh, well, I had to send my friend in to pretend he was me because the dad <laughs> had never even met me. W- was he hotter, like buffer? Uh, That's a good idea. He was my friend Lance. Yeah, he was definitely, um, he was more, he was, honestly, in hindsight, he was more attractive. And here's the crazy part. They ended up. Hooking up? Uh, yeah. They what did you do? No. Hooking up. Oh, I was fucking. Fucking like jerked off? You went yeah. into the house to meet the dad later, like you trying to play some Madden real quick? I got too, I was just too wasted, yeah. Yeah, I feel That's like. the worst. Did you ever, you ever get too wasted before a dance? All the time. I remember one New Year's, I, uh, uh, we, there was a, there's a bottle of Absolute, it's like a hundred proof, and it comes in like a disco ball looking mm-hmm. thing. And I remember I like brought it to the party thinking I was like, the, the dude, I was like, yo, I got the, this is like bringing, you know, Coors Light to a frat party. We in here. Yeah. But I drank the whole thing and I woke up just under their dining room table and pissed myself. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So. Were I'm, you laying face down or face up? Face the... down. Oh, yeah. But I was like That's under, a... under the table, like mentally, like in my drunk mindset, I was like, that looks like a blanket. Just a oh, levitating yeah. blanket. Oh, yeah. It was an interesting place to pass out. Um, yeah, I, that's manly. The, the saddest way to pee yourself is laying on your back. <laughs> just like casket. Just I, ready there's to just end something it. about like, you're like, you would, you, cause here's what happens. It's like you're in, e, like in, like in ER or something. You're like waiting for someone to put, you know, a colostomy bag in you or something. Well, for me, it's like, I, if I wake up and I've urinated myself and I'm laying on my back, it feels like. It's the weakest. It's just like, because I was so vulnerable. Because right. I, I, I then envision myself actually having done it. Somebody walks by and like, oh, this yeah. guy's up, up pissing himself. Up just, pissing himself, yeah. I don't know. It feels weaker. Face down is sad. Somebody face down and pee, you're like, oh, fuck, he peed himself. But if you're on your back and you pee yourself, that's like, I remember I was in a frat, shocking. I was in a frat. But like, if you passed up with your shoes on, people j- could just fuck with you. Right. Just whatever. Oh, that was the. Just tape a bush light can to your forehead. Yeah, it was like if your shoes were on, you were oh. good. And if they're saucanies, you're getting your ass beat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it, it's like, that was such a weird. And it was like, I feel like a lot of people listening would know that that was like a general rule. If your shoes were on when you passed out, you were like fair game. You could play tic tac toe on the forehead with a sharpie and like no repercussions. Yeah. Draw a dick on their cheekbone. We had a dude who had who was like men. Oh, uh, he wasn't. He wasn't like he was like paraplegic or mm-hmm. whatever. And they would braid his legs and shit <laughs> when he got wasted. Like a like a like a Boy Scout type of knot. No, not like a boat knot or nothing. Yeah. Dude, that would fuck. That would kill him. <laughs> but that just kind of yeah. oh, dude. That would braid would, it up. Look, his grandfather would slap you if you did that. Oh you know yeah, what that's what grandpa's <laughs> coming back in with the. So after you got slapped by grandpa, did you would you just take it or you fucking be like, I'll fucking pull the double A's out of your life right now? Oh, I remember because I didn't know what their traditions were. I think they were Greek right. or Italian. I could see that because always kissing you on like the cheek, so they might be slapping you on the cheek. When too. you get over near the Mediterranean, you you, you don't know what's gonna happen. You know they yeah. they had a little bit of that. Jo- they had a little Joey Diaz somewhere in them. Right? You like hummus? I just got big on that shit. Really? I don't even know. I put it on a carrot. I was like, I didn't even know you could do this. It feels like a, uh, it kind of feels like ranch for bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Call me a fucking bitch. That's, I don't Real know. Talk, I, I like bro. it, dude. I don't like celery because the strings in it piss me off. It's like a guitar yeah. in there. But I feel like you're like doing something. You know, I can never do it just for a meal. Like, like right. just a plant diet. A little much. A little much for me. I would never. But. Um... 
Yeah, my flight. I was my flight got canceled. That's what we're talking. About. Yeah, luckily I flew in yesterday, but it is. I mean, they were asking if I wanted to cancel shows. I was like, don't fucking. I don't know. Don't look at me. Yeah, I guess who makes that decision? They like, put it on me. Did they? Yeah, they're like, do you want to cancel? We can move this shit. I was like, I don't fucking. I don't know what snow is to y'all. I didn't even know that we were in Tennessee. Like, I yeah. knew we were in Tennessee, but, like, did I know that we were right. in Tennessee? Right, and that's every place you kind of go. It's like, you don't really, you're don't never in a know. place long enough to really, like, you know. Yeah. People are always, like, send you messages, like, hey, man, come, by. you know, we're yeah. doing, my cousin owns a root beer factory, dude. We'd love yeah. to have you stop by. And you want to do all these things. It's, sometimes it's just a lot to be able to take on, but. Oh, it's too much. You never really know you're in a place, kind right. of. Well, I also don't want to make a call based on y'all's weather where I say something and then people are like, you cancel for that? And I'm like, I don't fucking know. I remember when Delia right. one time canceled for snow. He got so much shit online. Yeah. I mean, people were yelling at him. Yeah, bro. <laughs> and he got a lot of it from me because he shouldn't have done it. But that's it. what that's I'm saying. Why. It's like people. He canceled for snow, bro, which is basically, let's be honest, gay water. <laughs> okay. Gay rain. <laughs> Okay, it let's does, be honest. It's very powdery out there today. It's like I was, I was, I was telling your boy the produ- it's, it's nice to walk on. You feel oh, like you're like, is this the next step to heaven? Oh, I literally, I woke up this morning. I watched Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street uh-huh. or Thirty Eighth Street. I'm shirt sure. on or off? Shirt off, bro. <laughs> there we go. Shirt off. Here we go. You know, chain on. Uh, chain on. Yeah, chain on. No shirt. Oh, how that, that movie should be intended to be watched. Chain on. No shirt. Yeah. That's definitely, that is a, that's definitely a gypsy wedding, I feel like. That's like a, <laughs> yeah. it seems like a gypsy Yeah, you're the wedding. ring bearer, actually. Yeah, yeah. I feel like, is listening to Christmas music past Christmas, is that, what, what's your take on that? Like, like in J- June? Oh, I, I, I've been listening to Christmas music for probably, I've listened more after Christmas when the stress is gone from the holiday. Yeah, and the views and are down a little lower. Myself. Yeah, and the views yeah. are lower, so you don't feel like you're bandwagoning it. But, like, is Michael Buble still pulling in plays in June? Probably. I go old school. I'm like Bing Crosby, you know, like that yeah. old, like. OG. I yeah, I, I don't know what he looks like, but it's like, yeah, I, I go Bing Crosby. I wonder if, like, when back in the day they were like, I'm going to start doing Christmas music. They're like, yeah, shut up. Like, okay, that's, that's what you want to do, Christmas music? But now the numbers don't lie. Oh, now I think for certain people it's there. But right. back in the day, it's like, you. Th- oh, you think you can compete with Jesus Christ? I yeah. think there was a lot of that back in the early right. day. Right, they're like, you don't need to do that. Like in you think you're better than AD? Jesus? 70 AD, some dude's like, hey, 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 I'm doing Christmas music. Yeah. Like, Fuck you, homie. Yeah. You think you can, you He's think off you the eggnog. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Man? Yeah, that is weird. It's just weird to wake up one day and be like, you know what I could fucking capitalize on? <laughs> some of this X mix music. <laughs> it's just a weird, I don't know. But there's not a big market in it. Right. There's not too many people on their vision board be like Christmas music. I don't know. I think Nelly did a Christmas album. Did he? I think he did. Who Nelly was, was great doing crossovers. He did a uh, Tim did that- McGraw question mark. No, who did he do the Florida Georgia Line? Maybe there was one with a jet. That's all I remember. It might. I think it was FGO. It might have been. T- it might have been. It might have been Tim McGraw. Oh, I think you're right. It might have been. Tim I McGraw. think it's Tim McGraw. I can, I can picture it in my head. I was thinking about us. I was thinking about me. me. Only just a dream. Is that it? Or am I just... Yeah, right? We got computers. It was only just a dream. Yeah. People love shooting music videos on a, a jetway. Just something about the open I, land. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of that song again. Think about us. Was it him and Tim McGraw? It was only just a dream. Yeah, you can probably just type in <laughs> Nelly Tim McGraw. Nelly Tim McGraw collab. Over and over again. There over and over again. Over and over again. I keep picking. And we're talking 149 things. million views. That's big. And I'll say this. Two of them could be mine. <laughs> <laughs> two, <laughs> two mil or just two in general? But here's what I don't Now, here's what I want to know. Oh, and they look. They Is really. I love bed? how they stop it right there. Does Tim McGraw have a bunk bed? Yeah, let's see. That's what I. <laughs> they made a lot of this really. First of all, they put that skull cap on Tim McGraw, which that feels... That's pretty hard. Little Kid Rock-esque. It feels hard. It just feels like they're really trying to merge artists. Right. You know? Right, so what did they do for Nelly to country him out a little bit? Oh, well, let's see if we can see... Is Nelly just, packing some Copenhagen? Just drag that thing over there just so we can see Nelly. Just We don't even need to hear it. That's when the St. Louis Rams yeah, this is still there. They put him in front of a brick building. Yeah. That's kind of country. Nah. Brick, I feel like, is from... 
Uh oh. They're touching belt buckles. Okay, yeah. Let's see right there. There we go. They're touching. That's a close up on belt buckles. Oh, the sidekick. Now, there they. So, so, to, so to get Nelly really hyped up, they put that big belt buckle on him. Yeah. They put that flavor flavor. They really put it right That's up. how they locked him in for this song. And then they got a picture of Faith Hill right there. And then Nelly. Is that, is that Sierra? his wife? Or. I want to say that's Sierra. Dude, Sierra. I hit on Sierra at a party once. Really? She's a fox. When that song, uh, there was a song that our, our school dances, you had to be hands touch, one, two step. You had to be your know, arms length away. So but tell when, me about that. But when, oh, so, what do you mean? So like in like eighth grade for our dances, mm -hmm. there was like chaperones and you had to be one arm length away because that okay. was, you know, social distancing for when you were horny. You know, you tried to be oh, one, yeah, yeah. one arm's length away. Oh, Seaman's the original COVID. You know what I'm <laughs> Spreading saying? everywhere, oh, dog. <laughs> but when Sierra's one, two step or uh, goodies, goodies. That shit, when that would come on, everybody would break the arm barrier. People would stop. That, I mean, that was like the first time my brain heard something. I was like, oh, shit. Me. I, I, who is that guy? Uh, who Pete came Pablo? You know what I'm I think it was Petey Pop. I love what I that do. That or Freak Leak. Wasn't that, was that Cookies? No. Goodies. Goodies. G close. But when that came on, that was like the first time my body really felt something. You know, I remember the first porn I ever Googled was boobs.com. That was the original. But the second time I really felt something was when Goodies came on wow. at the school dance. And that was big. That was everybody. All the chaperones were like, you guys are doing the freak dance and get them away. But <laughs> yeah, they always tried to break it up. Somebody blow a whistle. <laughs> yeah. Something Turn the lights like, on. Come out the closet. Yeah, they They're had like, air horns. What? Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like you're lying boy. Yeah, yeah exactly your shirt's off you're sweating yeah, yeah, yeah that was the like, first time oh that was crazy dude school dances man i remember one time going to pick this girl up uh oh freak -a leak was that it freak -a leak was a uh no goodies is there a song called goodies goodies uh sierra just had jams yeah just just uh no just goodies my good goodies i think sierra goodies Good as Sierra. Oh, with PD Pablo. Yeah, I think that is. That's the same photo on the nightstand, no? The second oh, one down? Yeah, it is. Damn. Look at me. I know my mm. shit, dude. <laughs> there we go. Subliminal messaging. Nelly is horny. Or were they dating? Probably. They, did they date, I wonder? I don't know. Yeah, it's this... all good. I don't think we can play it anyway, can we? Okay. Yeah, regardless. I, I'm playing it in my mind a little bit right now, but that's. But Sorry. that was like the, the school dance stuff was, uh, it, this was even. Who'd you go with? I, I think you just went with homies. Whoa. whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. <laughs> but yeah. like eighth grade dances, you kind of just showed up and then you just kind of like, like in movies, you'd sit at the wall and you'd wait to make eye contact with. But in high school, that's when you would ask the girl. Oh, really? Yeah. We had, no, when our school, it was big. You had to get asked or ask at like seventh grade. Wow. And they had different dances, man. They had Sadie Hawkins. Sadie Hawkins, okay. Then they had this one dance where they made a big shirt. Yeah, they would sew the shirt sleeves together. It was like, what was it called? Like a parachute? Love lock or something. You see how many people you could fit in there? No, you had to, it was you and your date. So y'all oh, were wow. like a big circle, you know, by yeah. the sleeves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you were, um, what's that dance? It might have been Spring Fling or something. So they would have these special shirts mm -hmm. made for everybody, and you had to be like locked in like this. Yeah. So all night you were kind of locked in. How did you pee? Uh, did you get, <laughs> did you get your pants? You just commit? <laughs> That'd be a weird I mean, place I'll to get this. hard. You didn't too. lay on your back and do it. <laughs> yeah, right. Like some fucking unnatural. Because then she's little. laying on her stomach, and then she's going out the honorable one. Oh know? yeah. Yeah. No, I uh, I remember but, one year I asked a girl uh, to it? to homecoming in a Tiffany's box, uh -uh. but it just said uh, homecoming on a on a piece of paper. And then I opened it like I was proposing. And then she friends on me that night. I went in for the kiss and she, she hit me with the cheek. No. Hit me with the cheek. In I mean, high I was, school? Yeah, I was way out of my league. This girl, she, she was like the girl who had like the, the tits in town. Oh, yeah. She, like she was, both you ask anybody, for, yeah, both of them. Yeah, you ask anybody about uh, in Camarillo, California, about, uh, about Christina. I mean, she had the bags on her. Bang! Bags. Bang! Bags were fully charged, but Joe Byron. Yeah, yeah. I love him. <laughs> yeah, but she was awesome, and but I was like, I was really stepping outside of my britches, you know. Oh, dude, I remember this one girl, man. I think her name was Noel, right? Good titty name. And she had, I don't need her whole body was tit. Yeah, her whole body was just made out of tit, dude. Every part mm -hmm. of her body was tit. You graze her hand a little bit, you're like, oh shit. Oh, Is that dude. an areola. 
even a high five felt like it had milk in it. You know what I'm saying? She just was all tit. Bro. Yeah. And I remember somehow she agreed to go to a dance with me. I I even remember when I asked her, I was so I was on mushrooms when I asked her and I got so hype after mm-hmm. she said yes. I ran and jumped over a, a chain link fence and cut my cu- literally cut my hand open and my stomach open. Did you grip it like you were pole vaulting a little bit? No, I just <laughs> tried to jump up completely. <laughs> jump straight into it. Oh, I was so stoked. Oh, because you're on mushrooms. Yeah, and I was like, I'm gonna show her this cool trick. You know what I'm saying? She knows she's dealing with a savage now. And that was Tit Girl. So anyway, I healed up and we went to the dance. And uh, and one of my hands was still pretty bandaged up. Uh-huh. You know, my hand where I got and cut pretty well was pretty bandaged. Mm-hmm. So I remember she let me like kind of get one of those tits out, boy, and I'm just batting that thing yeah. around like uh, some Mayweather shit, just oh, throwing so, rights on it. Oh, yeah. it was definitely that's, that's what'll heal the hand, tits. Oh, it was some, you know, yeah, some Canelo, bro. You know what <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, she yeah. Just yeah. let me right, just little little batting practice mm-hmm. with that tea tie. Oh yeah, and um, and then later on at night, she like we we're at my friend's house and we're sitting there and they had a pool table. And I'm like trying to get like trying to get her underpants off a little and with I, the mitt on. Oh, it was oh, so no. hard. And I think she kept thought uh, that I was like tapping her on the sh- like I was trying to ask her a question. Yeah, or something yeah. Because she would. I could see that. Be like what? You know? Because I kept every time I'd like kind of touch her with the mitt. Yeah, you should add like, her like seductively, like undo the wrap on your hand with her teeth or something going mm-hmm. around. I, if going back in time, dude, I would do it so different. Yeah. But I got so nervous because mm-hmm. she was so she was the hot she was the she was just living tit, and I got yeah. so nervous that I just kind of uh, I just fell apart. And uh, how's she doing now? I'm sure she's beautiful and has a family. Same tit, like most of the people that I know, or, yeah. or most of the, you know, like most women that I. Talk occasionally at night yeah. on Facebook. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Every once in a while, you dabble, see how they're doing. Four Regular kids, life. Arkansas. Yeah. The evil were saved. Yeah. They call them. You a natural tit guy or a uh, implant tit well, guy? Well, implants, there was a rocky time for implants. There was really a time was. where they came out real hard. Have you there ever come across any of those? Yes. Oh, yeah. I remember uh, there was a stripper in North Carolina, uh, Green Greenville, Greensboro, one of them. Probably Greensboro, maybe. But she Greensboro? she told me she got hers for like three hundred dollars off, and uh, I was like, I don't think that's something you want to cut, you know, corners on. Yeah. They were they were still good, but they they kind of look like um. You ever remember those old school DVD or like DVD stacks where it'd be like a tube in the middle, and then all the the DVDs were on it. Mm-hmm. It kind of looked like she had two of those, Ooh. and with like a little bit on top too, because it kind of looked like a nipple. Ooh. They were solid, but I know what you mean. They were like. There was some real, yeah, there was a lot of, uh, some of them were very. Mm. They were like shifty. Like you could kind of like, move, like you know how people can like move their like knee, kneecap? Yes. Like you could do that with her tit. It's kind of Yeah, tight. some of them you could, yeah, it seemed like you could kind of, like you could almost. Um, Shift do, gears. Yes. Yeah. yeah it put that bitch like, in uh, six. You know? Like you were driving an 18 wheeler. Yeah. There was some real, dude, there was a girl I met one time in Raleigh, uh, North Carolina. Great city. And her breasts were like these they were almost like a you ever seen like a um like a baby have like a poop diaper you know yeah and if you squeeze it it stays in that shape oh tempurpedic yes yeah, but it that. didn't go back it did her tits would wow. kind of if you like squeeze them they would stay there <laughs> yeah i don't know what is tempurpedic's whole deal about putting wine on the bed and just jumping i think a lot of couples that's like the highlight of their <laughs> just putting somewhere low on the corner and getting Bro, after you- it if you never left town, that's uh, that's <laughs> your true. summer Olympics. That's a honeymoon right there. <laughs> yeah. Grab the Franzia. We're getting after it. Oh, I think it's a lot of people, yeah. And then some, yeah, so, you know, I don't know. I think, I think if I was a girl, I'd have really weird tits. I think I would just have weird. I think you have a very model body for I a think? young woman, yeah. Is that I've a compliment? I've dated a girl recently that had a body like you. Was it me? I don't know what type of body I'd have. I think I'd be the the girl with no ass, but like knockers, just like you know, with them gangs, huh? Yeah, just bagged up, ready to go. Yeah, I think I'd just have, but I don't know. I think I'd have weird areolas. That's my biggest insecurity. I I know your body style. You're not gonna have weird. You you think think you'd have big areolas? I think I'd have weird ones. Like you know, the ones that kind of just like disintegrate into the sea. Of of skin, yeah, they, they fade out. Yeah, I think I'd have those, but I kind of like those. You know, it's fun. You don't know where it starts or it stops. Kind of like the ocean. 
Where's the Atlantic? Where's the Pacific? Just that incoming, outgoing tide. Like sometimes it looks like a little more yeah, skin. Yeah, a little tide like A little more areola. Dude, now that I think about it, I remember the first time I met you, I was hosting, uh, it was like 2017, in Oxnard, and you had your shirt off. It was after a show, oh, and you just had your shirt off, and you ordered, uh, what's the t- tuna called? Sashimi? You ordered a, a, a ahi tuna salad, but you're like, I don't want the salad. And, I, and I'll never forget that moment. And the, the waitress was so confused. She's like, so you don't want the salad? You're like, no, I want the salad, but I just want the tuna. And she was so confused. And you had your shirt off for that. Fuck yeah. And that's all I remember. Savage. Yeah. And Damn, that was my first was it impression. a savage move? It, it was like really it was. savage. And then you said something after. You're like, I can't believe anybody can just have babies. And then that was it. And I still can't. <laughs> but I was just like, this is double power moves. Shirt off. Well, actually, triple. Shirt off. Ahi tuna. Just opinions. Yeah. I was just like, yeah, man. So I, what do you want me to say up there about Thanks, you? <laughs> what were you, were you, were you were performing there? I was, we're on the host, same show? I was hosting. Oh, that's crazy. It was out man. in uh, Oxnard, that Levity yeah. Live out there. I was just hosting the show. That's probably about four years ago, five years ago. It was ago. a while ago, yeah. And wow. I forget who was featuring, but I just remember like in, it was a two show thing and it was like in between the two shows, you were just eating ahi tuna with your shirt off. Living long. But bro, you had the shirt off today watching Christmas movies. Oh. Maybe I'm living wrong. Yeah, you could be. Man. Maybe I'm living wrong. You could dog. be wearing too many skins, man. That's maybe what it is. Um, yeah, my flight got canceled, dude. Uh, and I, that kind of I always get. I always wonder when my flight gets canceled if that's God looking out for me or not. Yeah, I think my flight yesterday was an old plane. It had the the TVs that stick out of the seat, like the brick ones that almost look like a thermostat a little bit. It's like oh, a tan yeah. box. Yeah, it was Delta, but it, it was the pilot was pissed. I had my foot on the wall. And he goes, that's not a very, uh, he goes, that's not a very mature thing to do. Take your foot off. Wow. He, he said it like it was his plane, which look, I understand he's flying that bitch by all means, but he said it like he like pulled it out of the garage. Like he was collector Delta 747. Well, it's also, that's a, a very subtle way of saying you were in first class. Also, I do want to say that. that you, were, you know, that you, you know, when you're flying first class from <laughs> LA to Nashville, that's a, that's a $300 upgrade. And but I was feeling all- myself first weekend back of, uh, you know, I was feeling myself a little bit. There's only one place on the plane. You can put your foot on a wall or the very back. The <laughs> stewardess, <laughs> you just caught it up on the coffee maker. Yeah, I mean oh, the stewardesses are getting like they're all on their phone out there yeah. just listening to loud they got music, iPads or like TV and shit, shows, and watching shit. Coco like, Melon and shit. Yeah, it's crazy. It's definitely a different vibe out there now in the skies. Yeah, you know? but yeah, no, I uh, I feel like they nobody wanted to be there. The pilot was like pissed he was there because somebody used you know pilots use the same front bathroom as everybody else. Oh yeah, I thought they'd have one in the cockpit. It's so weird that uh, my ex girlfriend's dad was a pilot and they used to urinate into a jug up there. I think like a Folgers can would make sense. Well, I mean, <laughs> that's probably old school. But like, if they're real old. Some guy brings a metal can to urinate. Yeah, but but Folgers now are oh, are, are plastic, on, so I feel man. like that's, that's uh, bananas. Yeah, it's not good for the environment. If a plane goes down, that that see, I just wonder: is God looking out for me? Is like like could this plane go down? You right. know, I no, I feel that. Do I you think, ever think that that could happen? Do you 100%. ever feel like? Because when I was younger, it happened a lot. Getting canceled. Uh, getting canceled by God, dying in a plane crash. I do. I had that fear yesterday because the pilot was. I've never seen a pilot piss, and he was an older gentleman. I've never seen somebody like mad, mad, and it's like we're about to take off. You know, somebody <laughs> rub him off a little bit or give him some CBD gummies because he was on one, and I was like, I, this is the guy in charge of the plane. You right, know, that's the guy. Everybody else is bullshit. Like, think about how you drive. Right, think about how you drive when you're having a tough day. You're you're fucking. You see red lights as a suggestion. You're like yeah. maybe. So I'm like, on takeoff, I had this weird euphoric feeling. I was like, what if he just did a nosedive? What if? What if today's a day he's like, you know, that is one, dude, think about a pilot. Yeah. You really are. You're that, you, you really have the ability to say who, who won't, who, how many do you want, God? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In your hand. How many you want, God? And you also. Want ten dozen? Yeah. Because I got ten dozen Damn, this, back here. This asshole got his feet on the board, so let's Bro, take they, him out. Delta should be. Cl- who is the pilot's wife? How is she doing? That's is what she I'm taking saying. Taking care of them. They got to be treating these people. Good. I salute uh, pilots when I get off. I go, thank you for the flight. Because oh, everybody, yeah. nobody makes eye contact with the turning. They say thank you to the flight attendants, which I get that. But like the pilots are the, you know, like salute. I'll lean in there and yes, I'll say. Kiss them on the cheek. Good job, fellas. Yeah. Or ma'am. Yeah, right. And I'll say that even at the same, fellas or ma'am. And they know. They yeah, all know. Yeah, yeah. And even the lady, if she's a female pilot, she wants to be called fella. <laughs> she, be she got a little more gray hair than usual. You're like, I see what you're doing with that toupee. I see some. what you're doing. 
Yeah. Some women just want to go so hard that you they want you to call them man. Right. And fella. But that's what I feel like pilots don't get enough uh credit. Also, if I was a pilot, I would be like, I would go on the intercom and be like, I sure would love some Starburst right now. Ooh. And then I'd wait for somebody to be like, come bring it up. And then if nobody does, I'd be like, Y'all want turbulence? A little fucking rattle rattle? <laughs> what do you think? Like Dude, one this guy Dan Gilbert, you said the best joke, and he still has it because it's his joke. Mm-hmm. He said turbulence is a, is a button that rich that people in first class press. <laughs> yeah, Funny. So I wish I had that yesterday. I would have fucked with everybody back there. Row 23, y'all awake yet? <laughs> they should have. Or if you're playing those games where everybody on the plane can play and you yeah. win, you should be able to give yeah. them a little, remix them a little. Oh, yeah, just see what's going on. Stir them up a little bit. Yeah, I uh, I always think that like if my phone's not on airplane mode, like it's it's going to fuck some up. I but, but then I've been on flights where I forget to turn it off, and it's the same flight. So that's something I want to know. Is airplane mode a hoax? <laughs> you know, a lot of things. Have ho- I think they used to have like probably, you know, back in the day, they probably, what was before that? Before airplane mode? Yeah. They just turned it off. Or I Right, then know. they had air. Or they had like it's, silent mode? Because airplane mode is such a specific thing. I don't even know what it does. It just blocks calls? Yes, it's supposed to stop the signal, but nothing can stop the signal. Signal. Dude, my phone. I saw my phone the other night. Get up and get something to drink. At night. <laughs> like this thing's been off. For Did my two phone hours. just get a Mountain Dew Code Red right now. Yeah, this thing's insane. Yeah, I don't know, but that's the thing. I, I like. Are you a superstitious guy? Oh yeah. Yeah, so I'm like that too. Like before I take off, I'll be like, I, like I won't turn my airplane mode back on until the wheels touch the ground because I don't want to fuck up airwaves. You don't want to be in that bag. You know, I really like when I'm when I'm traveling. I like to have something on my feet. You know, you see some people do barefoot traveling. And most of these people are indigenous people or, uh, I don't want to say homeless, but could be, you know, could be homeless. But all birds are what I like to wear when I fly. I like to have my all birds on. They just have a, a comfortable, it's a comfortable shoe. It's It's classy, but it's also relaxing. It's like you're... It's almost like a, it's like you're in the library, but you could also go for a nice jog if you needed to. That's what they do. That's right. They got a new shoe, the Wool Dasher Mizzle, our weather repellent performance running shoe, the first shoe of its of its kind, sustainably made, made from real stuff, natural materials, bone and fur, with a low environmental impact on the planet. That's right. The wool, the wool Dasher Mizzle from all birds. Get them dub DMs, baby. Don't let winter storms put a damper on your run or your foot. Grab a pair of the weather repellent wood wool dasher mizzles. Wool dasher mizzles. They, it, it, there's just something about it. I haven't I haven't worn that style yet. The style I have is more, I think, of a comfort based style. But this winter, keep your feet cozy and dry. With the Allbirds Wood Dasher Wool Dasher Mizzles. Discover your perfect pair at allbirds.com today. That's allbirds.com. That's right. I wear about a 10 and a 10 and a half, and I enjoy them. You know, people are trying to lose weight right now. People are trying to save money. People are trying to use less, do less things, quit cigarette. Maybe quit doing sex or something outside of their marriage. People are trying all kind of things. New Year's resolution. Well, at the top of my list is learning a new language. With Babbel, the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions. Not only is learning a new language a fun and engaging hobby, but you can use it while you check traveling more from your 2022 uh, list. Of resolutions. The whole babble process is addictive. It's fun. It's easy. 15 minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn a language on the go. That's right. With babel, you can choose from 14 different languages Spanish, French, Italian, German. Start your new language learning journey today with babel, B A B B E L. Right now, when you purchase a three month babel subscription, you can get an additional three months for free. That's six months. For the price of three. Just go to Babbel.com. Use promo code T-H-E-O. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Code Theo. Babbel. Language for life.
Yeah, sometimes I think when the flight gets canceled that that's like, I just want, you know, and maybe it's egotistical to think that it's like, oh, is that no. is that part right. of God saving my life? Because I would rather that than like, you know, when you get, you like board the plane, like, oh, we got to work on the engine for like two to three hours. Like, yeah. that doesn't make me feel better. Like, just lie to me. Be like, the pilot had to go get some egg bites from Starbucks. Right. Like, I, like when they're like, oh, we're working on the engine, we'll be good in a sec. Like, I don't want to know that. Yeah, but I... It used to be dicier. You would hear the dude in there work, and you'd yeah. see a guy with an oil can. I remember right. one time it said guy, oil on it. Oh yeah, yeah. He was a and cartoon was figure. Like, dude, what is going on? Yeah, I, just, and, I don't want to know anything about like like I literally I, I I edit a lot of my videos on flights because I don't want to think about the fact that I'm like just in the air. Like when my phone dies and like the it's just like the TV on the plane's like not working, and all I have is my thoughts. That's the worst flight of my life. I'm just sitting there thinking. Really? I'm just I have a lot of anxiety in, in that sense of like. You know, That's my whole you, childhood was that we didn't have because they didn't have phones. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the fuck I did growing up. Probably like Sudoku puzzles or some dumb shit, or like made it tic tac toe. But I like I like I need to do something so I don't think about the fact that I'm just like in the sky. Right. It's yeah. Yeah, I guess it's interesting. I guess part of the thing of a flight is to try to trick people. You'd think they'd try to trick you more to thinking that you're in the sky. Like on the inside right. of the windows, draw have like a forest or something. Yeah, or on like it, a or glass like a- bottom floor. Just in like, <laughs> but it, put it like one aisle, just one aisle, and you get to pay extra for it. Like row thirteen, you just get to see below you. That's kind of hard, bro. I'll tell Influencers you one time. would be like, in the fucking flights with the feet. One time we were landing somewhere, and it was a uh, prop plane, right? So what does that mean? It was just a small plane oh, that oh, had oh. the um. Spinner. Oh, the connecting flight ones are scary. Yeah, it was a real small one. So you can like you see the so- propellers. Something hit uh down, boom, 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 bounced down the side of the plane. Oh, right? no. Oh, was that, bro? It was crazy. Because there's only a couple things it could be. You're in the air, you know? Bird. Bird. Alien. Kevin. Yeah, a smaller plane. Person, you know? Loose yeah. person, skydiver. Yeah. So I'm like, what? So everybody's like, what the f-? You know, some guy's yeah. like, I know what it is. There's always We're some like, guy. Fuck you, guy. There's always you some know? guy who looks over yeah. and he's like, yeah, that's actually just the tropical storm of the stratosphere. Yeah. What are you even Under, saying His wife's me? like, shut up, Henry. <laughs> there's four Jack Daniels bottles <laughs> spilling out from his waist. So did you ever find out what it was? We got out, bro, and no joke, in the front, um, in one of the um, rotors, yeah. right, there was a bird thing. Mangled. Like a um, wings. Mm, enough of a wing. Enough of one. Where you knew what happened. Yeah, oh no! It was it like a mallard? No, no, it was bigger than that. I would think it was probably pelican or. Damn, I mean to yeah, because usually to to Something rattle large. a plane, but I will say some you of those know? connecting flights where you got to like you land in like Seattle, but you got to go to Spokane, and it's one of these like mountainy flights. Yeah, and you can still see the propeller on the. It's like an uncovered propeller. You ever taken one of those? Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Right. So this was one where something got, you know. Oh, and wow. And part of me wonders, because I felt us go off course a little. Part of me wonders if oh, one of the old dogs up there was like, you know what? See how Theo's doing. I'm about to, well, no, I'm going to hit some. Oh, 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 he's like, I'm done. Because how hard would it be if you're having a bad day, you're tired, you know. And you're just a mallard, just hating things. Your wife's doing something, you know, it's something with your husband. Because there's a lot of gay pilots now, too. Mm. Which... I'm fine with it, but it's just like, do we know enough about their relationships to know if the guy can, if something goes bad? Um, like, I feel like we know enough where, like, if a straight man in a, in a straight relationship, if something gets real bad, the guy, there's been enough study where he's maybe not going to crash. Right. Is a gay dude or gay woman just going to be like, you know, Fuck I it. just. I would love to see a pilot with a mood ring on it, you know, and, but like one they yes. don't know about, one they don't know about. But if I walk on and it's like blue or green, I'm like, okay, they're feeling all right. But it's like bright red or yellow. Yeah. We might need, a, uh, we might need to delay this a few hours. Go get some, some chamomile or something. Would these, there should be intel on the, po- so you can look, even right. on the app, it's like, hey, you know, uh, like, you know, Samuel, Rhonda, whoever the who's pilot is, it. how yeah. they're doing. Yeah, because even on Uber, it says like their favorite activities, their right. parks, favorite sports team. The, I want to know more about the pilot. Yeah. Also, I think, like, you know, I'm sure they have a lounge for pilots, but, like, they should have, like, the Delta Sky Club should be for pilots. Right. Like, just a place where they can just post up, crush a couple of Michelobes. I don't know, but the, I, uh, I don't know if you can drink. One I know. Michelob. Okay. One. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or a, a non-alcoholic one, just to feel like they're doing something. Yeah. Just to give them that, like, that edge mentally. 
Well, the, the, the Actually, thing, never mind. <laughs> That's a terrible oh, idea. <laughs> I don't know, man. Now you got me wanting it. Yeah, I, you just, just one. Because I bet if I'm a pot, there's no way some of them aren't drinking, man. One of my yeah. ex-girlfriend's dad, my childhood girlfriend dad was a pilot. Or he, and he had a couple extra families and everything, dude. He had like, it was crazy, bro. Yeah. He was really just, you know, being the best pilot you could be. He's oh, like, yeah. If I'm going to be landing, if I'm sleeping here after a year. Yeah, he's pumping. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm having some kids. Yeah, man. well, I've met people at my shows. Yeah. Like on like a Friday night, they're all like a little hammered. They're like, yeah, man, we're all pilots at the local airport. And they're all like hammered. Hammered, and I'm like, they're not gonna be hammered in the morning, but like a little hungover, a little on edge. Yeah, because here's the thing: you can't assume that pilots have a magical power. Right. Maybe they do. Maybe part of going through the Air Force and going through flight school, they're like, they start to weed out the people who have really bad hangovers. I bet they do. Yeah, can you be hungover and in the military? Yeah, dude, that's the military. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's just called the, the military. But I just feel like they just plow right through them mentally, you know? They just go, hoorah, and they fucking beat the shit out of that hangover. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I but don't know. still, I'm, they got it, though. They, they, they have the hangover to beat the shit out of But they just of. cruise right past it. Yeah. Um, what uh, Do you, I, I, you don't strike me, and I, I don't mean this to be offensive to you, but you don't strike me as the kind of guy that would survive in a plane crash type of scenario. You are correct. I don't think I would do well. I was thinking about that yesterday on the flight. Like, if I'm going down, what am I doing? Am I dapping up the homie next to me? What am I doing? Am I reaching a couple rows back just to tell uh, an elderly man, like, thank you for your service? I don't know. <laughs> thank you for your service. Just being old. <laughs> just putting just up with millennials. Of, the guy just got out of jail. He's probably, <laughs> what if he's a pedophile? <laughs> he's a teardrop. He's got out of jail. Yeah, teardrop tattoo. Uh, yeah, I don't think I would do well. I, I mean, I don't think I would do well in a lot of you tough know. scenarios, you know? Really? Mm -mm. But say you crash, mm -hmm. right? You crash. Yeah. What is some of your first moves when you're on the ground? These are these are the things you got. Oh, we're we're make like you so you're like not bro. on impact. I'm not splat. You crash. Okay, but yeah, I, but I am dead. alive. But like I'm a little mangled. You're alive. You're probably you're doing a no. How about this? You're pristine. Okay, big word. People are like, what? Oh, I look good, like fine. I mean, literally, like every you, movie action hero. I have like you one star right here. Better than yeah, you almost look. Better than when you went in. I look like that dude in the, the insurance commercials. What's his name? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, what is uh, that guy's name? What First thing I'm doing? Damn. Allstate guy. All, uh, yeah. what's, it's like Danger or something cool. Yeah, Danger. Danger Rick or something. Guy's hot. First thing I would do. What do you do? Because this it's important. The first thing you do is important. Yeah. Because you're on an island. You guys, there's no police coming oh, for wow. probably a couple weeks. Wow. First thing I'm doing, um, <laughs> probably checking my phone. No, that's I'm not being a honest. You could check it. It's that's not a, that's done. I, I, the worst is going to be some idiot on the beach the whole time, like trying to get their phone to work, like yeah. holding it up at the sun, yeah, shaking. They're like it. asking the stewardess, "Can I get more coffee?" The stewardess doesn't have an arm. Uh, does anybody? Yeah, like anybody no. got Boost Mobile? <laughs> nobody has. <laughs> nobody has Boost Mobile in general. Yeah. I, I, realistically, I think I would probably try to get the youngest people out of the plane at the crash first. But even that's weird. You're just on youngest? an island yelling for babies. Well, because they have the most potential in life, isn't? Because. Or you say no, seniors and ladies first, I think. Is it? I think so. Unless it's changed. Maybe this yeah. is where the difference, I think, in just like, in, this is where things are changing. It's yeah, what's like, the cutoff? save the babies. <laughs> yeah, but you can't just be young. Where's the kids at? Yeah. Little weird in 2022. Where's the kids? The first thing you land, you go, where's the kids at? They're like, all right, you should have. Not if you just saluted the guy <laughs> behind you. That's the first thing you, you say. You salute and say, where's the kids at? I don't know. What, what do you, who are you saving first? What's the first thing you're doing? The first thing you got to do is be able to provide food for everybody. Where? Oh, like on the island? Yeah, Trevor. Okay. The first thing you have to be able to do is provide food for everybody because people need to know if you're a leader or not. That's true. Because if you're not a leader out of the gate, then I think you're, you risk, you take on a lot of risk. Uh, I don't think you need to be like, insane alpha no you no, know no. you don't want to fake it mm -mm. i'll but... take you take the shirt off i'll probably take the shirt off or i'd rip the shirt off just to assert dominance maybe just one sleeve or something no i think if you're gonna here's what you don't want to happen you don't want to try to rip your shirt off and you can't get can't, it off can't do it i've seen that happen at many frat parties it always gets <laughs> it always gets caught in the collar part because it's different stitching up there well yeah and the collar won't break yeah and people are like Wah! 
<laughs> and then they just like pretend like that was their plan the whole time. Yeah. Like we know what you're doing Thorbin. We know what you're doing. <laughs> Rip it off already. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I think, um, so you got to feed everybody. So the first thing you have to get is probably you're going to get, have to get some small ground game. So you're going to want to do probably squirrel is easy to hunt. Mm -hmm. Pheasant is one of the easiest things to pheasant is. Oh, pheasant's real easy. If you've just cut a crop or something, pheasants will. I know what a pheasant up. is, but also what is a pheasant? I've, I've seen them pheasant. little bitches. Are they, um, they're like not squirrels, but they're not chipmunks. A pheasant is a bird. Oh, it's a bird. So you're not. It's gonna... a small bird. Okay. It's a small chicken. I grew up in California my whole life. I don't I know understand much. that. I sir. know pigeons and seagulls. Oh, dude. It is oh, these little guys? Oh, yeah. These bitches are legit, baby. They're basically like a Mexican. They almost look <laughs> kind of Mexican, honestly. Um, they all have a nice little like diamond chain on them. They got a yeah, little. I like, mean, they look like one collar. of the you know like the Mexican guy that comes in with the like the uh, uh, mariachi. Yes, I can that's see that. what they. They seem like they have that sort of. They look fast. Circumstance about them. Are they yeah. not fast? I feel like catching that would be a little hard. Uh, pheasants are one of the easiest things to catch if you are if you're stuck somewhere and you need to cook for people. I, I already I can tell if you if you're going to be like more of a sous chef. You're going to be like the guys. I like, do coconuts because they can't move. Yeah, you birds be. got legs and wings. <laughs> coconuts, none of those. They're just chilling. Yeah. They don't really have an option. Yeah, so coconuts is good, man. So you could get some coconuts. I think another thing you could prepare for people if you want or capture for them, squirrels. Um, what else is something that's easy? Rabbits is a little trickier than you would think. Right. If you could get turtle, that's an easy thing, but you're going to have to be able to get it open. Yeah, I'm and doing here's stationary. The thing. Or you just use a, a turtle shell to like chop uh, coconuts back on. You don't hurt the turtle, but you use its back as like a uh, cutting board. Yeah, you can't be the guy who's like, let's don't hurt the turtle in a plane crash. You gotta, because here's the 2022, thing. 2022, man, that's me. That's our millennials. Dude. We're pussies. We're like, let's get the turtle, but let's not. Like, I'll sacrifice the coconut shell, but I'm using it for shoes after. <laughs> I need to use everything. Yeah, I'm the stationary and guy. dove right there, right there. Look at that. And a dove is a beautiful bird, man. I saw... I've actually had Dove. They had two brothers live by me at my old apartment complex, and they was always grilling Dove outside. <laughs> grilling Dove? I thought Doves were always white. No? Um, or was, what, are the, what are the ones they release at funerals? No, those are church Dove, that funeral church Dove. Church Doves. Uh, Where do those birds go Parker after funerals? Dove. You're also talking... <sighs> they just let them go, and they just do they like track them down? There's usually a handler that's like about probably a quarter mile away, and they fly to that guy. Oh, really? Yeah, there's a guy who usually parks at like a... And they know? A strip mall or whatever. They got yeah, like it's, a... It's all uh Find my iPhone type, type thing. I don't know if they have that. They used to have homing pigeons where... Oh, yeah. Um, Bobby Kennedy was on, and he talked about when he was a kid, they would take homing pigeons, and they would put them on the train. Whoa. And they would ask the conductor to let, him go, let them go when they got to like Virginia. Yeah. You know? And then whoever's homing pigeon flew back first, that's who won. It was like him and wow, his buddies. Wow, like a tough a mutter, but for the sky. Yeah. I mean, they've been doing this forever. The carrier pigeons, birds are great at this. Birds so have always doves, been a messenger. You, got, you need to prepare a dove for somebody. You know how to cook a dove? Uh, grilling, I guess. You could grill, yeah. I think it'd be easiest. Probably going to have to have fire. Squirrel. What is this animal? Easiest? Oh, this, is, this article is easiest animals to hunt for beginners. That's you. Uh, tis I. Dove, squirrel, Girls there you go, pheasant go. coming in oh, there. Look there at that view. What does it say there? Pheasant are excellent Damn. game bird. That bird only has one leg. He's all ready to take out. You, oh, just yeah. play, you want to play a game of hopscotch, and then he just falls over. <laughs> and you just throw him in a chokehold. <laughs> oh, yeah, that bird is ready to party, uh, son. What are pheasants? But, They're just homies of chickens? They're just in that same realm? You know what? That's a great statement, man. Let me see right there. Homies of chickens. Is that actually what? Uh, Webster's Dictionary says. Remember to be patient and have fun with your hunting adventure. Hunting pheasant is a great pastime. It's especially fun to do with your children if you're getting them into hunting at an early age. There you go. Wow. Um, 11 people downvoted that. So that's 11 people who had a tough time catching pheasants. AKA did they really? me. Yeah, if you go to that article, 11 people downvoted it. So I was one of them. But 38 were like, fuck yeah, thumbs up, brother. <laughs> No, they put easy to hunt. That's what they're asking. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, but that's 11 people that were like, it was a, that was a tough Tuesday for me. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go down a little bit more. Raccoons. I can see that. They're already in the trash can. You just close the lid, and they're kind of done for. Yeah, but, you then, but then you have to be willing to set fire outside of the can and, watch them, and let them burn in there. It's kind of like that using that green like egg. Like Traeger? Yeah. Have you ever used that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, those are great. The Traeger type, or the, the little pellets. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, that's definitely a white, that's a white trash Traeger right there, boy. You set fire <laughs> outside of a garbage can that has a raccoon in it. I mean, you're eating in two hours, oh, yeah. but it is. What it's it got is. good seasoning. Like, it's kind of like a cast iron in there. You know, it's all the different years and years of food and seasonings in there. That's a good point, man. Not that's bad. A really good point. And let's look at animal number five, too, to see what animal was. And ducks. Duck. Ducks make sense. Bread. All you need. Duck is basically a mentally handicapped uh, <laughs> bird. Let's be honest. I mean, because birds are supposed to be flying and you see some sitting in the water. Yeah. It's almost like if you ran up on a couple dudes. It's like and bobbing was, for apple, but with your fists. Yeah, you it's like you ran up on it. a couple dudes. They sitting in the water. You're like, oh, these dudes is coming in light. I feel like birds are almost looking for it. Ducks are. Ducks. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I meant that. Birds in general. And that's enough. I don't want to know all of them. Let's don't see all of them. I want to save some for the, for the people at home. Well, just to think for myself, too. Yeah. I don't want to, sometimes I don't like knowing. You don't want to see that animal in public and be like, that's a seven right there. I'm not right. going to go for it. Well, yeah. And we know, en- we know enough now to either be able to survive or not survive. I think lizards would be number one. See? But there's not enough, well, to catch. There's not enough meat on them. Yeah. Could you do it, though? You think you could survive it? No. I don't think so. Damn. I mean, there's only so and many. You know t- in your heart. I'm asking you seriously. Uh, I, I, I mean, I would give it a, a solid try, but. You know, I get mad if my coffee's too hot at Starbucks. That's not the type of guy who's going to make it in wilderness. Right. You know? And you got to be willing to sacrifice somebody immediately. The first thing you need to do is take somebody else's life in order to show that you are dominant. Yeah, yeah. I don't think so. Because I remember one time I was really drunk in college and I tried to fight a guy and I went to go smash a glass bottle and the, gla- and the glass bottle didn't break. Ooh. So I don't think that I, I, that was my. You're like, I'm just recycling. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> that was my t-shirt tear. It didn't yeah. break. And, and after that, you know, I play that back in my head a lot when I think about alpha situations, manly shit. And I, and I just don't think, you know, I would give it a good go, but yeah. I would piggyback on other people. Like, I would become friends with the guy who could catch a boar. Right. And then I'd be like, bro, I got the cranberry sauce. Yeah. Hey, Darren. Yeah, exactly. I'm bringing, like, accents. Yeah. You know? Oh, you need coconuts? I got you, bro. Let me get a lamb chop for a coconut. Right, right. Let me trade. Let me do something right. here. Right. I, I mean, I... So, yeah, you would definitely, you would have more of a skill set of a, um... I'll, like, shout people out on Instagram, probably. But I'll shout you out for, you know, a couple of ribs. What's Instagram? I mean, you could chisel it into a tree. <laughs> like, that, when I was, a, when I was, like, real young, that was our Instagram. was, like, writing, you know, right. I love, you well, know, Ron, you know. That was an Instagram story. You just, like, put a lock on a fence with your initials. Yeah. And you're like, Theo was here. It was crazy. Different People time. do that. People do just put locks on, what, what do they do? The initials of them and, like, a lover and put it on, like, a bridge? Yeah. Hmm. You ever done that? I've never done that. I'm trying to think of, was there a young thing that you did when you were a child, like a, in young love, like some like thing you guys did together, like name a, um. Oh, bro, I got one. What is it? In my, my old hometown room on the mm-hmm. ceiling, there's like those little like neon, like glow in the dark stars. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they're still there. But. And they I, should be. Oh, yeah. The best is when they're still there when you're 30, dude. You're oh, like, bro, I was okay. back over the holidays. You turn the lights off, smoke a little bit of that <laughs> kush, and you look up, and you're like, is that motherfucking Orion's belt? <laughs> Just a ceiling fan. But when I was younger, in like sixth grade, I would like name the stars after the girls I crushes on. I'd wow. be like, that's Krista. Ooh. And and that, like, you know, you're listening to me like, this is fucking pussy. But that, like, like there was something about that that I was like, damn. I just, it brought me, it was like hearing goodies by Sierra for the first time, every time. That was one thing that I, that I, that I think I would, that I did, you know. That's beautiful. You got anything like that? I got, there was this girl, Chrissy, that I was in love. I don't know if I was in love with her, but she lived close enough for me to be horny about. (laughs) Which was the same thing. You know what I'm saying? But I was in love. Oh, God, I remember just everything about her. Just, just God made just. Just made semen want to climb out of my body, yeah. you know? Like semen want to take a peek. Oh. Like a gopher, seeing if his groundhog's there or not. Oh, you'd I'd hear up. semen just come up to the top of my tongue and just look out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like Crawl back down. Or they go yeah. get the homies, like, you got to see this shit. Yeah, well, let's ride, homie, let's ride. And, did you, and you just thought about her, or, or, or you, you guys went on some- I was in love with her, Trevor. You, I was in love with her. And you went on uh, a couple of dates with her? Or? We were children. You, they didn't have dates. Mm. They didn't have any- we Play date. Huh? Play date. No, no, no. We live near. There's no play dates in my fucking neighborhood, dude. People were getting molested. <laughs> so, so I, I live in a very uh, suburban town. <laughs> yeah, this is way different, dude. Play dates, you know, juice boxes. This guy down the street used to bang this substitute teacher that lived in our neighborhood. This kid, basically, he was 16. Yeah. And then he would chase us around in the church, like field, 
with his car in his car try to hit us. <laughs> and so, that was a date right there. That was a play date. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So basically this dude was getting molested by an older woman. And then since we called him out, like uh he, just he would try to run over us. He just car, turned that bitch so. into Grand Theft Auto. Just a little bit of GTA yeah, in real like, life. It, yeah, there was no play date going yeah, on. You know, I feel there was that. one kid that drooled all the time that we would all kind of spend time with, but I think that was more like a cry for help, I think, than anything. But um what was I gonna tell you about? Oh, so oh, but I was in love with this girl, yeah. Chrissy, bro. Yeah. God. And I remember she had part of her tooth was chipped out. Yeah. You know? She had that little baby Lloyd Christmas on her, you know? Love it. And I remember always looking for pieces of rock or shell when I was like outside of the schoolhouse, like when they had uh Oh all the gravel. Yeah. Trying to find one that the, would be like the, the Cinderella story. Yeah. yeah. Did like you ever that find would be one? that glass slipper? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I found a couple. I remember collecting five or six that were pretty close. Yeah. yeah. Did she and take I showed them? her one time. Somebody locked us in a room. Like you guys need to get in there and fuck. You know, just some. You, you know, know, like even better <laughs> rocks. <laughs> Probably some local forty year old. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Just <laughs> the same guy driving around in the car. Bro, there was so many creeps, man. And did any of them fit or no? Mm, I don't know or did she like take any of them or was she like yeah I gave them all to her wow I think she thought it was sweet I would I think it's sweet now just hearing about that you know I put it on a puka shell necklace oh yeah if I'd have had that ability to make them necklace kits you know yeah when it, that was always if somebody if a girl liked somebody a lot of time they would get that necklace kit and put the thing randy you know and spell it out yeah. get thing that we had a dumb one where if you take the inside of like an aquafina water bottle the cap it's like a plastic and you like you can make the plastic a, a wristband and the weird joke was like if they put it on you and it broke you had to like make out with them oh really so you were always praying it break you like tensing up your knuckles you sneeze extra hard <laughs> oh fuck i guess we gotta make out no mac but yeah, the inside of an Aquafina cap, there's like a, a little rubber thing you can poke out of oh, the yeah. center, to make a little wristband. But you see a kid, like maybe a guy who like probably has a couple of like misdemeanors now, but he'd have like three wristbands on him growing up. Mm -hmm. And you're like, dude, fucking got some puss this morning. Oof. That was, yeah, I feel like growing up was always just a way to flex, you know, just like having a girl wear your football jersey. Mm -hmm. You know, you walk to school with a hickey. Everybody wore tank tops on hickey day. We caught two dudes sucking on each other's neck, doing fake hickeys on each other one time <laughs> really? before school. Yeah. Damn. But had they not got caught, those dudes would have oh, yeah. fucked. Legend. Then they would have fucked each other. Yeah, maybe. I mean, that's those true. Those are straight legends. In case you haven't heard, car and home insurance is important. You got to insure, you know, just the way. You could hedge your bets and assume it won't get stolen or damaged, but that's risk. That's big risk. If you're sleeping at night and you're doing candles and you don't have any home insurance, baby, dang. You riding the rails, baby. You riding, uh, you know, you on you on you on the devil's highway, baby. And if you haven't heard, car and insurance rates are going up this year. That's why you got to turn to the zebra. They can help you find the perfect insurance in just minutes. The zebra compares car and home quotes. They're a comparer, so they do the comparing for you. You don't need to go sit at some spot and a man's in there and he's showing you this and showing you that. And he got, you know, he's trying to sell you a little raffle ticket or something for his son, a little Cadbury egg or something. In fact, the Zebra saves people an average of $922 a year on car and home insurance combined. Plus, they'll do it all in just five minutes. I've had great experience getting good insurance and making sure I'm insured. You know, if somebody break a window, a falcon hits your damn house or something, you want to be insured. You know, if a damn uh, pirate comes down your chimney or something. Look, times are tough and things are different. Save time and money a minute. Show your support. Go to thezebra.com slash T-H-E-O. Get your free quote today. That's at thezebra.com slash Theo. Just go see how much you can save. That's all they're asking. The Zebra. You know, everybody's trying to keep their body healthy, and their penis is definitely part of their body. So you got to keep that root healthy. You got to stay root positive, they call it. Blue Chew can help. Blue Chew, making waves and bringing more confidence into the bedroom, by offering that little chewable tablet. Help men get stronger, longer-lasting erection. If you don't do erection a lot, you can change it. Blue Chew is a unique online service. They deliver the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. 
Sign up at BlueChew.com. Consult with one of the discreet people on there. No awkward conversation. No doctor visit. And they'll hit you with that package, baby, that Blue Chew. And here's a special deal for our listeners who want to dick up. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code THEO at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's B-L-U-E-C-H-E-W dot com. Promo code T-H-E-O to receive your first month free. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Do you think in the future, I think in the future, everybody, do you feel like more, everybody's just going to be just kind of ambisextrous, like everybody's just going to be? Yeah. I feel I like think it's, it's going to be a charcuterie board of fucking. It's right. a little bit of everything. Yeah. You're like, I, I like that. I like some of this. Yeah. If I'm drunk, a little bit of that. Right. If I'm high, I don't want anything. Yeah. I just want myself. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just like, I feel like that's where it definitely, because I think you used to need mi- just men and women to do sex mm-hmm. because you needed reproduce life needed reproduction. Right. But now they got enough people got enough that, 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 that box is checked. And I, I mean, I just, I found out about what a surrogate was a year ago. I, what, and what do you mean by that? You, like, I, like when somebody else holds your baby for you. Oh. I, see, this is a true thing. I said it on my podcast, but I, I thought stiff socks, stiff socks, baby. Yes, sir. Um, but I thought the dude fucked like, like, let's say, uh, Miranda is the surrogate. She's going to hold the baby. Okay. I thought the dad like put it in. Her. I thought he like fucked her, mm-hmm. but it's not that at all. They just shoot it up in there, uh, with like a, you know, a, a, not a syringe, but a syringe type of field. So you thought the dad went, the dad and wife picked like, out a strange yeah. woman and the dad went out. I was over like, there why wouldn't you want to surrogate? That's fucking well, it would save two you birds, a, not, one bone, baby. Why wouldn't you? Well, if you can get your wife to agree, you're going to save a lot of money because otherwise it's like 110 grand, I think, to go to a center. Yeah. Drop it off it's to the whole thing. But I then that dude goes over there and does it. Yeah. And what a Reef that dude but, is right, but that's also just weird. I mean, and if you are a surrogate baby, turn up. But I, it is weird to nut into a cup and be like, my son or daughter's in there, and then you just hope. But I mean, that's the same thing as seeing a pregnant woman. You're like, hey, there's a there's a kid in there. Well, I think we're good. we are getting past the days where oh, someone's going to carry their own child. Yeah, that's getting weird. Mm-hmm. Like, I think by the time I have grandchildren, and I don't even have any children, I'm also fucking lonely. But by the time someone who knows me is younger they th- it would be very weird to be like hey look at this picture of when i was in my mu-. i think Mother, that's yeah. starting it's going to be you're going to be in a center where you're going to be yeah completed it'll be know? like you don't need a iphone charger to plug into the wall every day you got a, a portable so you can be like i got a portable stomach that i can just have a kid in yeah which you know can you take the carpool lane with that probably but that gestation. Know. Now, if you love gestation, you could be like, oh, I'm old fashioned. I'm going to have me a child. Right. And people are like, you're crazy. The people that still roll you their know? own cigarettes, you know? It'd be the same type of people. Yeah. I, I still, I, it is mind blowing to me that the body hasn't been like, uh, like, give me, let me get a part two. Like, how we, oh, iPhone, I agree. We got new iPhones every other goddamn day, but how do I not have a drink holder in my hands that aren't my hands? And I know my, everyone's like, oh, your hands. But like, sometimes you're holding enough shit. You're bringing enough stuff in the car. You're like, I right. need a, I need a fucking, Couple a big right. gulp right here. You know, need something to hook, hooks in between two of my ribs. Right, exactly. Hold an, an eight Why do we got to sleep for eight hours every night? You know, where's the USB-C charger I can just plug in my ass? Right. Get going. I think we're getting close, man. I, you yeah, know. It just some, some stuff seems a little dated. We used to have tails as humans. Huh? Did we really? I believe so. Oh, wow. And then just over time, so I'm wondering in the future, over time, what are we not going to have? What are we going to lose? Well, I think at that point, you start to look at aliens, man. Yeah. And you look at aliens. And they're always the creature has big eyes, big brain, mm-hmm. or big head, you know, cavern head. And uh, which was a nickname of some kid at our school, too, when I was a kid. Actually. Cavern head? <laughs> yeah, and he, he wasn't doing real well. Was and smart, I though? He, huh? I mean, <laughs> he passed away. So he wasn't smart <laughs> enough for God to keep alive. But he was, you know, he was, I guess he was kind of handsome when they fucking dressed him wow. up. But um, a lot of fedoras on that boy. Oh, dude, I went to school and t- uh, the, uh, oh, I had the crazy story, but um, they had a lot of the special ed kids dress up in suits one year to like, to like, one, like there was a new teacher and he, he's like, we're going to have all the boys are going to wear suits. And it was just like, yeah, it was just crazy. 
that he just did. to like impress the teachers just to like like why are the special ed kids all in suit like it was like did you want to suit the next day uh kind of makes me want to suit. Do, i mean i think it hyped the game it definitely hyped a little bit of fashion at school yeah so that was good but i don't i just think that overall i don't know if it was like you know it was just kind of a weird move for them to do but um anyway what were we talking about <clears throat> oh kissing that girl human tails what are we gonna, what are we going to have in the future that we're not going to have oh well, i'll tell you this oh so so aliens if you look at if <clears throat> if you look at aliens how many humans are born with a tail 40 ever or like 40 cases so how many is that 40 times to what 24 so that's uh 288 that's no. per year there's 40 tails cases no it's more than that if you're born with a tail you keeping it now i am yeah i think 20 years ago you said no yeah you know take his tail off you know? yeah i mean they'd fucking burn you at the stake you're a witch dude well back in the day i think it was a real bad look but yeah. now it's more like you'll you know next you'll be in a video with willow smith in an hour if yeah you have a that could also be the extra <laughs> hand i'm looking for you know you're fucking carrying in That's your true. groceries on that bitch yeah. use it yeah what if your tail could just part your hair for you if you're big that'd be great bro <clears throat> now what about this though um what are we talking about oh <clears throat> i think so if you look at aliens the head the eyes are big mm-hmm the thing, their hands and legs, there's nothing even to them. Hmm. Like, if you look at an alien's body, it's always just like this long, gr- it's not even usable. It kinda just, it's like they fin- they didn't finish drawing it. Right, and it's like they just don't use them anymore. The Simpsons only got four fingers. Is that true? Yeah. People think that's for, like, you know, animation. No, it's just laziness. Wow. They're like, I fucking forgot to put one on. Because that's the last thing you draw. Nobody's going to start an animation with hands. That's insane. Start with hands? So, like, what is it? What do you mean? Like, like you know, you start drawing an anim- like a, of a person with their right. face, and then you work down. Oh, yeah. So hands are the last thing you draw. Hand, yeah. It doesn't even matter if you have three, four. Yeah. Four is good. Oh, yeah. They got three middle and then one one thumb. But I like that. It's kind of cool. You don't, I mean, what do you really need? I mean, some of these could go. Which, which, which finger are you taking off first? Pinky. Oh, hold on. I would take this third finger out. Is that the ring finger? Yeah. That's a ring finger. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to make it real hard for a girl to be like, you're trying to, you're trying to be forever? And you're like, I, I can't. Yeah, I can't. I would, but the Lord yeah. told me not to. Yeah, would, that but, is funny. Uh, yeah. My uh, Genetics, my it? grandpa didn't have that finger. He got cut. He worked in a sawmill in, in Ohio, and, and he was like doing uh, something down the line, snipped it right off. Dude, my grand, my dad had part of his finger uh, was taken off. Somebody yeah. slammed a door on it. That hard? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? And doors, that was back when doors were a lot more... Made out of, like, lead and shit. Just healthier doors. Oh, yeah. But my school teacher also was missing this part of his finger. Listen to what happened to him. It was his ring. He was at the at a baseball game for his son, mm-hmm. and it hooked on the bleachers, and he stood up to oh, cheer for no. him, and it pulled his finger off. Fuck. Well, whatever the play was, must have been good to stand up. That's an RBI right there, <laughs> you know? That's dedicated to, like, yelling and screaming. Double, so. Yeah, something right there. You know, you don't just get up for, well, maybe it could have been a bad play, too. Like, what the fuck, ref? The fuck? Lost a finger. But, uh, yeah, what, what were we just talking about again? What what mutation on a human do you think you could be good with and without in the future? Finger? Lose one? Well, it's just when you look at aliens, it's mostly just the head and eyes. So, oh, at I that point, it's just yeah. become this data center. Gotcha. The rest of these things are things you don't even use anymore. And I think that's what a lot of things are becoming. It's like if you go to the store, there's just self checkout. There's only like two dudes in there now. Yeah, you know, it used to be a lady working as a nice. Now it's two dudes in mm-hmm. there. You know, one of them's always hitting on the other one, and right. one's not into the it. The other doesn't even work. They're just wearing a blimpy T-shirt. You're like, where the fuck? Yeah. yeah so what? I mean, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Any. What's the thing you can take out of your body you don't need? Uh, Liver. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That esophagus. Uh, bitches in the back. What are these called? The Eardrums. I know in the throat, your uh, tonsils. Tonsils. There's so much stuff you don't need. But what? But what I'm wondering is, but that's what I feel like. Aliens are just people that have, aliens. They just come back to visit Earth and they're like, oh, this place is a dump, and then yeah. they jet. I think they. It's almost like if your parents took you to like, what would be like the shittiest place? Hollywood your Boulevard could, to the library. Libraries up there. Like if you go to the library now, yeah. you walk in there, it's like. 
two homeless dudes, you know. Yeah. Coming on each other, probably. <laughs> Harry Potter books open, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> open, bro. Open. But the Chamber of Secrets is, 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 <laughs> is some that. dude yeah. looking in his own ass over in the periodicals, you know. Like, basically. Like, I'd stay for that. Okay, bro. <laughs> I'd stay for that. You'd stay and look around. You'd look take around. your kid in there to say, hey, look, this is what it used to be. Yeah, I'm going to go to the bathroom. Right, right. I'm going to go film this and send it to World Star Hip Hop. <laughs> I can license it but, for $62. Yeah. But that's what aliens are now. That's yeah. why they're not staying and hanging out. They're basically stopping by like the oldest civilization. It's like there's so many more hype civilizations out there. A hundred percent. What's the first city you think aliens would visit in the, in the U.S.? Like if they're like, bro, you're going to Earth, you got to go. To, or, or like where's Oh, the, they would probably go to Tokyo for sure. You think? I think you got it. Yeah, because they're aliens, dude. They're like really hyped up. And Asians are probably the closest to aliens. I think that that's. <laughs> That's kind of, even they know it. Yeah. I think if an Asian person sees an alien, they don't even, t I feel like they don't even tell you. That's probably why. Probably that's the homie. That's what I'm saying, that's dude. Right so yeah, if you dialed in like that, then. What what place in the, in uh, America you think they would go? Like what city do you think they oh, would just America? like. America? Yeah, but like on a vacation. Like, you know when people are just like, oh, you got to go They're down to. They're not coming here anymore, Trevor. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I They're not coming. It's like. Imagine if your parents kept taking you to the shit. It's almost right, like right, right. I'm gonna take you to, you know, I'm trying to think of a place. Um Or when they first started out, do you think they were like, You gotta oh, go down to PCB? When they first started out, I bet yes, yeah, San Diego probably was really cool to see. I bet New York City was probably yeah. pretty good. But the buildings are so tall nobody can even see the aliens when they can't come land by. them, yeah. And yeah, and you can't even land them. So it's almost like you want to get in a more rural area. Santa Fe, New Mexico. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Scranton, Pennsylvania is basically just a woodwork. Is basically like, it's kind of like the Santa Fe of the East. I can you see know, that. I think you know. Not, not I don't know. Exactly. Yeah, it's very calm out there. I don't know if anybody's ever yelled in Pennsylvania. That's a lot. People definitely yell in Pennsylvania. You think they wake up and they just go fuck? <laughs> <laughs> That's some pretty good shows, dude. So one of my favorite shows is out there in Wilkes Barre, Pennsylvania, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, you got Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. You got some good cities out there. So, um, oh yeah. Pennsylvania is pretty sick, man. You got the Dutch, you got the Amish. Oh, there? They're full on, dude. You see 100% Amish out there. Now, what? Uh, where are you going on your tour? I know you got a tour coming up. I do, dude. I'm actually starting in, in uh, New Orleans. Oh, so I'm really? excited for that. Yeah, which is interesting because I've never heard anything about New Orleans for comedy. Yeah. I, I don't know. And why. I got no, I don't even have anything to tell but you. But you're a Louisiana boy, yeah? <laughs> yeah, but they just don't have a, it's not a real comedy place, you know? Yeah. The, I will say, out of all the ticket sales, out of the, it's like a 28 city thing, it's like a big thing. The, the the place is selling the least, Nala, baby. Yeah. Because they're like, I don't give a shit. I'm sucking crawfish right now. Right, they're doing other stuff. That's the thing about New Orleans. You'll hear just, a, uh, just as much funny stuff from your neighbor. You'll hear, yeah. there's just so many good stories and so much, like, there's more about music. It's a real yeah. city of, like, revelry. And yeah. to stop into a place and watch some guy tell jokes is very foreign to New Orleans. I can see that. And their style. I think you said it best. It's like they already have enough shit going on. It's like you got to go to a random place to really, you know, Grand Rapids. You right. got to go there. But for New Orleans, like there's always shit popping off. Be like, yeah. I need a good belly laugh. Ugh. I mean, look, if you're in New Orleans, fucking come on out. But it, it's kind of all out, over. Yeah. You know, I'm kind of doing all over the U.S., a lot of Florida, uh, St. Louis, Ohio, fucking Portland, Seattle. Like tw it's just like 28 cities, I think. That's awesome, man. Congratulations. Thanks, man. It's my first like big like tour tour. The rest have just been like kind of little one-offs here and, you know, just your, the, the typical weekends at clubs. But yeah. this one is cool, man. I'm really excited for it. What, um, did you have a name for it? Yeah, it's the Are You That Guy Tour. Oh, which, yeah, because people always say that. Too. Yeah, I mean, it's just like it kind of started as like a joke that my friends would say like at a bar. Because like I love drinkers as my like hometown friends because they're just, yeah. they don't give a shit about any of this stuff. They still remember when I got caught on a chain link fence trying to hop it in like ninth grade. Dude, I, I that's was, happened to me when I was, I was in love. Oh, oh, with the, the, the barber. You know, oh, I was stuck no. on a fence. We missed a UFC fight. We were supposed to watch that night because I got stuck on a fence for like an hour and a half. <laughs> I just didn't. I couldn't commit. But that they'll bring that shit up. One time I tried to jump over a bush and I tripped on the bush hedge. Like, I ran and just fell face first, and a lady driving by in a car goes, that's got to hurt, and they still say it to me <laughs> to this day. I'm like, that's got to hurt. So I love drinking with them, but whenever we go out, a lot of times- It was a safe area y'all were in, huh? Oh, yeah. People were driving speed limits. That sounds like safe shit. Yeah. No, very safe. Hedges. This was in front of a Ralph's. Yeah. You know. Dude, yeah, I remember people betting on how many dogs, a ba a baby dogs was going to be born. 
you know? Yeah. And people would be out there betting. Yeah, we had a lot of shit like at the dentist. You guess how many jelly beans were in the, the mason jar and you yeah. got like free dentistry. It was like that. Shit like that. So yeah, a lot of times I like to drink with them because somebody will like, the most common thing is like a lot of people know the face, but they might not know the name. It's like, oh, I've seen a video of yours before, but they don't know the name. So it's a lot of like, oh, are you that guy? Are you that guy? Right. And then it kind of just like, I think it's a cool way to have like a narrative behind the, the, the tour name. You know, I think it's like at first I was like, I don't really care. It doesn't matter what the tour name is. Um, but I think it is cool if you can have kind of a overall theme of it. So I talk a little bit about it in my standup about being like, just like, you know, people, they know the face, but they don't know the name. What does that mean? And people, rec people all the time think I'm Trevor Lawrence, Jacksonville Jaguars quarterback. I get tagged in his shit. Yeah. Whenever they have a shitty game, people will DM me. I've called you that this week. <laughs> you know, saying to somebody, Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. Somebody called me Trevor Noah before. That's kind of cool. Cause that is nice. That's progressive, man. That is. You got to get out there. So, you know, it's, there's like three important Trevors in the world, and I might be half of one of them. So yeah. I think it's just a cool overall theme, you know, of just being like, you know, it's uh, it, the video stuff is great. But, it, you know, I, I've been doing stand up for like nine years now, eight, nine years. So it's like, you know, this, this, this it's like a different lane. It's different yeah. from videos, but it's, it's just, you know, just good, good shit. Good That's time. Cool, man. Yeah. Congrats, man. Yo, we worked on a show out in. um. Where were we, New Jersey? Oh, yeah. Fucking, uh... Remember those two shows at night during COVID, wasn't it? Yeah, it was at a horse track. Yeah. Red Bank, New Jersey. Red Ocean. Red Bank. Yeah, those were, uh, those were interesting. Those were good shows. It was just so... It was just such a weird was, setup. Yeah, it was, weird. it was a wild setup. Shit and the second one was cold. Tables. I remember getting a little Really brisk. cold. Really a cold. Brisk. Yeah, that was... Uh, was that like a year ago? That was middle COVID. That was peak COVID. It was, it was definitely over a year ago. Because it was in... It was... It was like October or November. Cause I remember I was doing dates out there, um, but we did do that, man. Yeah, that was a yeah, that, that was a good time. But I just remember that was the first time I really sat in a crowd to watch a stand up show. Was to watch a set after, because I feel like as as a comic, you kind of just do your shit and you sit in the back. But when's the last time you just sat in the middle of a crowd and just was like, I'm gonna just enjoy it for what it is? Yeah, it's much different, you know. It is different. Well, you start to see what people are even. Some people well, you see also they want to be there. They start to know the guy. Like I watched a show of Brendan Shaw's not long ago. And I was like, oh, a lot of these people are happy just to see him because they see him on video. They see him on yeah, different things, yeah, yeah. you know. And it's like a lot of, of audience, they just want to come. It really is like a showing of support. Like, yeah, it's like it's watching like, with a smile almost. Right. It's like, yeah, I think this, they might be like, I think this guy's funny. They might think this guy's my favorite comedian. But there's also this other separate thing that it's just like, I want to be there with this person. Right. You know? And it was also cool. It gave me more assurance because after that show, I was talking to you and you're kind of like, yeah, it was all right. It was a little like you felt a little like shaky on it. But I was sitting in the crowd. I was like, you know, everybody was laughing the whole time. So sometimes, you know, you forget you're in an outside. This was outside. It was super spaced out. But every table had their, their laughs. Yeah. But, you know, when you said you're like, ah, oh, it, was, it was OK. I was like, no, nah, you were crushing the whole time. But it's, Thanks, weird. it's weird to think when you're up there that you might not be doing well, but then you, you put yourself in the crowd and you're like, oh, it was great. Yeah. So it was cool to just be in the middle of it and kind of just watch it. And it was fun, man. Yeah, I'll, 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 for some reason, I always feel like I didn't do good. I think because I just hold, I always want to do great. Yeah, you know? but that means you care about the craft. Every, I mean, like I, maybe like twice in my life, I've gotten off stage and be like, oh, I fucking crushed. It just sounds weird to get off and be like, I'm the man, right. you know? So yeah, sometimes I wish I had more of that in me. Though. Right, I think it would do but me it's humbling. well. Yeah, but there's definitely times you get off and you're like, oh no, that was a good set. But I would never like out loud be like, I oh, fucking murdered that shit. It right. just sounds crazy because then somebody else is like, all right, it was seven minutes. Yeah, but if a if a woman hears it, they're like, that guy's a king. You know, you know? I'm gonna start saying it. I'm gonna say it this weekend. I fucking yeah. murder that shit. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like coming up in the open mic scene, you would hear somebody be like, oh, I fucking crushed, and then you like watch her set and you're like. Right. Asterisk? Maybe. What does that mean? So you just yeah. kind of like, yeah, I don't want to, I don't know. Maybe I think it's just an artist thing to always think you can do better. I feel the time right. all the way. Every time I post a video, I'm like, ah, could have done this, could have done that. Every time I get oh. off set, I'm like, could have done this. Something's done wrong that. in my head. I, I wake up in the morning and I think, fuck, man, you could do better than that. <laughs> just the second you wake up. Uh, every day. <laughs> That's it. Uh, just look I in the mirror. Up Oh, it's a negative start, brother. Positive affirmations. Some <laughs> yeah. people wake up and they're like, you can do this. You are all holy. You are God. And it's, you just look in the mirror and I'm like, man, fuck. <laughs> Brick. Yeah. Fucking Steve Rock. <laughs> Strike on a Tuesday. Right out of the gate. But it's good. Uh, but some, some, days it's, it, it, some days it gets better. Um, 
what else was I going to ask you about, dude? Uh, oh, I saw you at Simon Rex's movie premiere. Yeah. Simon Rex is uh, one of those guys who I've just like been watching for forever. Yeah. And it same. was cool to kind of like get connected with him. But yeah, we saw Red Rocket. And uh, there was yeah, a Simon's lot of- a big fan of you. Sim, Simon's a big fan of yours. Simon's, and mine. Si Simon's great, man. Yeah. No, he's, he's the a, best. He's a really good, really talented actor too. Yeah, that was wild, huh? Yeah. How wild has that whole, I mean- Simon Rex right, and uh, Simon's been on here before. Him and actually uh, Young Gravy. Gravy, yeah, that's, that's a boy right. of mine too. Yeah, and Simon, um, and Simon's been in front of Simon's like the first guy that really kind of turned me on in some ways on the people. He like I remember he put out a tweet one day and he's like, "Hey man, this guy he just said some really nice shit," and I was like, "Oh my god!" About you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I saw him at one of my shows and he was sitting just sitting in the back and uh, and I got to meet him. And I was stoked and then we became. Really close friends, actually. Yeah. Um, for a while, the pandemic's kind of kept us uh, separate, but yeah. But he kind of checked. It was weird because he was just fully off the grid in the pandemic. Yeah. He moved to like like the desert. Yeah, and he moved then, out there. Mm -hmm. and, and then, then he got then this call for this. He got this call for this movie, Red Rocket. And then he's, I think he won. He's winning shit for that. He was on the front page of Hollywood Reporter. Yeah. So it's like sometimes that's just the journey and the path, not to get all fucking zen out CBD. Uh, but it is. Uh, there's no. I don't know if there's a better story. He's the, yeah. uh, he's like the, almost the. Dude, he was banging Paris Hilton at one point. Yeah. I mean. It, yeah. And there's, if that, yeah, there's definitely an up from there. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, but, I, but it's just like, you would never be like, I'm going to go to the desert and then book a movie role. Sometimes you just got to go and like give it time and like figure out what you really want. And I mean, he's proven himself to so many industries. Well, he's just been. I mean, just to have gone and been like, I'm just going to do what I want to do. Build himself a home right. out in the desert. I'm going to chill out. Sean Baker, the director or whatever, sees him from Instagram or from something or just mm -hmm. sees his work mm -hmm. or sees who he is. Yeah, I think, yeah. And he said, this is the guy who can play this role. Mm -hmm. And that was the amazing thing about the role. It's like, I don't know if anybody else could have been that perfect for it. Right. It just fit him. It didn't even look like he was acting. He was no. just being that character. Right. And that's what, like, the best acting is. People that don't look like they're acting. Yeah, acting it's pretty. tough, man. You fucking, you think about, you, for me, acting feels like I'm just high. I'm thinking about every move. I'm like, would I say that? Is that normal? Right. I don't know. Really Here we go. And yeah, he crushed All it. right. Oh, the guy walks in. How are you? Oh, you're doing good? Yeah, just Yeah, too... acting is really, do you want to do, does it make you want to do it? I know you had a show that you were I was pitching pitch. some stuff. I would only want to do it if it was with my friends and like uh, there wasn't Smart high player. stakes. If it was right. like super high stakes where it's like, you know, me and Timothy, you know, Chalamet got a riff on some shit. I'm like nervous. I'm in my head. I'm like, this jawline, you could fucking cut a pepperoni with that. So like, I'm just getting like, I would get in my head. I would want to like, if me and you were like doing something or like yeah. I was on, like if I did mm -hmm. Dave or something with, with like Lil Dicky and Santino, like that would be cool. Cause you're like, it feels like a little less pressure. But even then, there's fucking 75 people on set. There's somebody who just brings you like a hair tie and you're like, I don't even need this shit in my hair right now. Like, yeah. It's just too much sometimes. It's like, I like how I film where it's like me, a few other people, and a camera guy. Like like three people max. Three, four people. Cause, right. Because then it's just like. Well, it's, in, it's, in your con uh, it's in your control. Mm -hmm. You know? So you get to be the editor of it. So you yeah. really get to be. Do you think that's part of it? I think I think I like being in control. I also I feel like the more people, the more expectations. The I think like I love in stand up when I'm blinded, like when it's like the the light is super bright on me. Because like when I can see everybody in the crowd, I get in my head and I'm like, oh fuck, this person's not looking at me. They're on their phone, this and that. So I get in my head easily. And then if I'm looking behind a camera and then there's like 40 people behind it, sometimes it's hard to zone out and be like, okay, just do it your best at zone in on your craft. Because sometimes you're thinking and you see somebody like fucking like roll their eyes in the back. You know, like am I bombing mm -hmm. up here? That's right, you see somebody drink about. out of a, the cup or something, you're like, what? What the fuck? <laughs> Are you thirsty to my shit, dog? <laughs> yeah, fucking dry throat? You're not laughing, dude? Lube up them chops. So, yeah, can't you see, bro? I'm freaking making magic. Yeah, and, and I've been on a few sets before, and it's just it's like- A lot of long days, long too. Day, it just takes the funny out of it. The best oh, stuff is like true. is pointing at your cameraman and be like, oh, get this real quick, get this real quick. But you can't go up to a fucking DP who gets paid $97 a minute and be like, yo, get this? He's like, what? This ain't a vlog? So- I'm off the yeah well, exactly he's like you got to get that approved by this and that i mean yeah the best part about the sets is just they got a lot of like licorice so that's nice yeah they got the snacks that thing is nice but, but I, I mean think about it sometimes yeah i think about like do what a, i sometimes it'd be nice to have a break from uh doing uh touring and stuff but i guess you can just right. take a break yeah um 
I would want to work on something that I was a fan of. I, I think I would say if I, you know, I, I had an, I, I've had auditions for like all type of shit, but one, I had an audition for a curb and that one I was like legit stoked oh, on cool. and they, and they riff all, they, there wasn't the, the interview, not the interview, fuck it up. This is why I don't book anything. <laughs> the audition, you're just supposed to riff a, a scene. And I was like, that's, um, that's, that's dope. That's amazing. You're not like trying to focus over word by word. You're just like, this is my interpretation of it. Mm. So that type of shit. I'm cool. If I was a fan of the show, I'd be down. But sometimes they're like, all right, you're going to play a marshmallow and a sci-fi. I'm like, what the fuck even is this? And that's a real audition I went on last year. Yeah. And I did not get it. Even worse. <laughs> Bro, when some of these things they send me out on. Damn, I can't be a dessert. It's funny because I get these auditions and I think like, I don't want to do this shit. It's like, yeah, well, you can't even book it, dog. Right. <laughs> what do you have to complain about? You didn't even book being somebody's Ugg boot, you pussy. So. I mean, yeah, you've done. That is a good point, man, because I'll say a lot of times, like, man, I would hate to do that shit, but then I'm not even getting offered to do that yeah. shit. Actually, I've gotten offered some things. I got offered different voices and sit and uh, animations and stuff like that that I've passed on. Yeah, I think sometimes it's just the amount of time. Have you, you done spend. traditional stuff? Like, you've been on like enough sets and shit. Huh? I've done some stuff. I got to uh, almost did a movie with Chris Pratt. Okay. But that was like, um, oh, I got there and it was just so much. It was like a 12 week commitment. That's what I'm saying. It's insane. And it was just such a small thing. And it was just. Um, Who were you playing? I'm grateful to him. I was just playing like, a, it was like kind of like a rednecky kind of guy in a uh, postpartum war or something. So you in like 2073. Yeah, something like that. All right, and it was cool. I I saw I saw it. It was cool. Oh, um, you saw the dude who played your role? <clears throat> no, they didn't end up putting another person oh, wow. in my role. That's I good. Think I would have been pissed. If they put somebody else in there. But I think when I got there, they didn't exactly even know what the role was. They were still figuring it out. That was the interesting thing. It was just such a like leap of faith. I think was Chris just like, which is insane. Just call him first name basis. <laughs> was he? Was he just like, oh, I fuck with Theo. Let's just get him in on something. Yeah, yeah. That's he just, cool. He actually just hit me up and asked me. and um, that's, that's how I think it should be more of. Yeah. You know. I think it is. Get, everything's getting like that Yeah, now. I think so. You know. All the, the, it's like you just hit your friends up and say, sometimes anyway. We think about like Sandler. He's just been casting his homies for the past like 30 years. And that's the way to do it. That's yeah. why the chemistry is so great. And it's like you see and people are like, oh, they work so well on screen. It's like, yeah, it's their 20th movie together. Yeah, so I think well, that was that another one. thing that was there. There was no. That's one thing that Spade always says. He's like, dude, if you're gonna do a movie, you want to spend time with your friends. It's gonna be six weeks, you know, yeah. at least with who you do want to be with. Right. You want to probably be with buddies or people you enjoy having dinner with. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> I mean, these days you just don't know. I know Tim Dillon wants to do a movie. You know, people want to do different things. Right. I think it would be interesting. To, I think to do something and then just sell it directly to people. Yeah. You know, that's what I think would be really interesting. Yeah, the hard part is like 97 platforms to stream on now. But it's like I can shoot something and put a little bit of money into it and just put it on YouTube or something. I don't, I don't really know what I don't know what people want these days, you know. Yeah, and you told me and I remember this, you know, that people like a lot of uh your crew they don't it's hard to even watch a long movie. Bro, my phone goes off, I get one text, I can't go more than 2 minutes without being like, "All right, who is it? Bank of America or the homies?" Right. Neither. But for watching a movie, you mean? <laughs> yeah, it's just something about like, like I almost got to put my shit on airplane mode just so I don't even think about it. Because it's right. like, if your phone buzzes, it's weird to not be like, oh, I wonder what that is. Right. You, you can go straight to start to finish on the movie, no phone touch. Uh, it's yeah. hard, but it's See? definitely happening more. But like, uh, I'm, but I'm trying to do it purposely. But sometimes I'm like, do the you slow, ever just turn scenes? your phone off for like half a day? Ugh, I need to. I, I got a buddy who's all into that shit. He'll like turn his phone off and go to the beach. And I'm like, I just all into that shit. What do you mean? Just being just, he just leaves being? it at home and then drives to the beach. But I'm like, how the, what how do you get to the beach? Huh? You just head West. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. That part is weird. Cause then you like, I don't know. It, no, it's not great. I fucking, I watch TikToks till my eyes are bleeding. Like it's not uh, good. It's not good. Well, I started noticing when a lot of TikTok, the songs would show up in my dreams that I oh, wasn't doing no. good. That's horrendous. I knew I the wasn't doing The Renegade's on there while you're just on a dragon. <laughs> oh, I knew I wasn't doing good, you know? Yeah. It's, yeah, it, it's, honestly, it's, it's, it's muscle memory. It's like, I'll be peeing, and then I'm just scrolling. It's like, if I liked your Instagram photo, I was probably peeing. My dick was in the other hand. <laughs> I should be in jail for that. <laughs> a lot of pedos out there, man. <laughs> okay, I wouldn't you know? put me in that boat, but, you know. Uh, well, not you, but I'm just saying it's not. 
don't know if it's more popular or less popular. Pedophilia? Now, yeah. Mm, I, think I think there's a lot of more, more closeted ones because you can see so much stuff. There's a lot of like, I'm amazed there's not things that block someone, um, a, an adult from talking to a child on You'd think. social media platform. You'd think. It's just like, how do they feel no responsibility for that? Like, that feels crazy. Oh, like to me. Google? Or uh, no, like Instagram or Snapchat. Like, there's nothing oh, that says right, right. that a 40 year old can't talk to a 15. There's no like thing that stops one from messaging the other. That is weird. You, you should have to answer a question before you DM that person. And you're like, what's yeah, your favorite you Care just, Bear? And if you answer that, jail. Yeah. If you answer that, even type out a letter. Yeah. Anything that's just not no. Yeah, it is weird. I don't know. But but the, the web is like, it, there's so many layers. Like, my friends were like showing me like how deep you can get on Reddit, like what type of weird shit you can find in there. And it's like. That's heavy, huh? Oh, yeah. You can, there's like. And what is it? What's all Reddit, on there? I don't even, I don't even know. It's like a forum and there's like little subreddits, which is like a smaller forums, like groups of like oh, literally yeah, yeah. anything. I see some of that. I, I use Reddit for porn. I'm not going to lie. but Really? Yeah. You can, you can find some cool stuff in there because it's just really specific stuff, you know. Like a girl choking on like a pine cone or something. But, oh, damn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, oh, that's reforestation. <laughs> right, yeah. That's the real Forrest Gump right there. <laughs> but, uh, so, but yeah, it's just like, it's, you can get so deep down in just kind of anything. It's like, the internet probably does try to like block out the weirdos, but there's probably people jerking off of the Chick-fil-A website, being honest, just finding something on there to get off to. Oh, dude, we used to have a guy, I remember, that would come pick up a girl at our school, and I think he was, I don't know if he was a pedophile, but he was just older, you know? <laughs> it sounds like, yeah. And he would, all remember, tell us about using, like, the Wendy's rapper, the Grease and the Wendy's rapper to play with his play with his body. Yeah, that man should be uh, castrated. And I still, sometimes I wish I didn't think about that, but sometimes I still think about it. You ever drive by Wendy's and be like, I, I could try it? They do have pretty greasy burgers. No, I don't want to think about it like that. I just think sad about it. I just oh, think, man, I oh, wish oh. that I didn't know that. Yeah. I wish God didn't let me know that. You wish that Wendy's didn't have the Frosty so you can disassociate the two. Dude, when I was in, like, junior high, yeah, that dude that came, I remember that would, like, do the bacon, like, the hamburger the with grease, that guy, Wendy's guy. Yeah. He drove, like, this yellow cutlass sedan kind of car, mm -hmm. and um, he had like done he you know like people used to put flames on the side of stuff to make it look cool yeah but he'd taken like a blowtorch and like just burnt the side of his car and it was like just make it look like he was driving the speed of light just yeah it was just like just some of his like his his plan his like like plans didn't translate i don't think that good but um i mean if there's ever a car to touch yourself in that's up there oh i'd probably be three or four god the seats were so comfortable i think a pontiac there. Aztec, probably the number one car you touch yourself in. Aztec. Oh, he yeah. Just, I mean, it's just a weird car, but they, they don't catch your eye enough. But if mm -hmm. you look close, they probably do rub one out in there. Dude, we used to have a lot of men would drive over by the um, Win Dixie in our town and all be back there crying or touching themselves. It's one or the other. Do you think they ever did both at the same time? Can you be hard and crying? Mm. I, I don't think I could, honestly. That seems like a lot of stimulation at once. I could, I think I I think I probably you got to focus. I feel like the immediate answer was yes in my head. <laughs> it's like, as sad as that. Yeah, happy tears whatever. maybe. You can do happy tears, but you can't be like bawling about like your That's dog true, that passed away. That's weird. Yeah, I don't think you can be bawling about it. Um what else are going to say? Oh uh oh we had a lot of narcs back then cuz I remember yeah. a lot of dudes would get sent back to our school and they'd be narcs, you know. Yeah. And uh we had a few of those the JROTC kids. Did y'all? Yeah. They, they would, like, dress up like cops on, like, Friday nights at football games. And they would just pretty much just tell you to throw your trash away. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what they're doing now, but. And they would have wooden guns sometimes. <laughs> and after school, there was always this group of kids running around the halls with, like, wooden oh, guns. Oh, yeah. And there was JRO. It was, they was uh, like, flipping around and shit. It was ROTC, yeah. Yeah. And they'd always be, like, have, like, these kind of, like, semi, kind of, like, marine haircuts. Yeah. Even though they didn't have to get them, I think they just got oh, them anyway. Yeah, you're going to do it. And then they, they um, gave themselves cauliflower ear a little bit, just from punching themselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the wooden gun's weird because you're like, what are you gonna do to somebody? Give them a splinter in the forehead to fucking freeze. <laughs> Some of these dudes were savages, and they would all do that car speed thing where they would race their cars and put the quarter mile on the window. You know, they would write it oh, on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was huge, like three points. How would you tell one. a narc? Was it pretty obvious? They would just like when they weren't in camo or whatever the fuck they're wearing, cargo oh. shorts. In our town, it was easy to tell narcs because the police were just, 
It was a small they town. They were too nice to him. Well, and the guy would always, we'd be like, what town are you from? And he would be like, oh, I'm from just like right over it. Right and he over, couldn't right name over a the town. Creek. Yeah, and he'd be like, dude, dog, there's no like creek. five towns around here. no creeks around here, bro? <laughs> you just spilt an Icelandic water, all right? Just pick a town, bro. You couldn't yeah. even name a town. And I remember some of the narcs would be like this 35, oh, they had like this one dude who was like 35 years old, and he came back as a narc, and he had real smooth skin, and he was like kind of, uh... I don't know. If yeah, that's big narc energy. If you got smooth skin selling drugs, no zits, and you're selling drugs, that doesn't check yeah. out. And he, he would just, yeah, he would like, he kept saying uh, that he was from Texas or something, you know, yeah. some place that like people like knew about but didn't really had never been. And then he, I remember he started dating a girl at our school, mm-hmm. and then they busted him for being a uh, pervert. <laughs> <laughs> and he was supposed to be busting us. Damn, it'd be your own narcs, you know? And he married that girl, Lauren, actually, wow. which is crazy. He went to jail, I think, and then got out and then married her. For, for pedophilia? I mean, I think he went for, you know, indecency with a minor or something. I think a lot of, why was it always history teachers that were the closest to pedof- pedophiles? Our, our history teacher, he would knock girls' pencils off the desk, so he'd check out the rack when he dropped it. Now, that's not to give anybody ideas, but... He would like, like if you were like, oh, uh, what, what's, what's the answer? You knock off the pencil so you'd like reach down and he would just stare at the Grand mm. Tetons. Stare at them nugs, huh? Stare at them. Them young nuggets. And he did that for a couple of years, real thick glasses. If so somebody just 4K had 17 vision. year old tits, would you look at him? Like, <laughs> 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 what? You, you can't. <laughs> what are you doing? No, just don't ask what I'm doing. Don't ask Answer what I'm doing. Question. I'm not looking. Because it seems like <laughs> you're looking. Bro, dude. it seems like you're a narc right now, dude. <laughs> Where's this feed going, huh? Where's this feed going? Nashville PD? It's just a straight. Is that a producer? Is yeah. he a narc? Yeah. I mean, that's a crazy question. Is it that crazy? Yeah, but this guy, dude, he came back to our school, yeah, and he's like, his first thing was like, who's, who's selling drugs? And we're like, what? That's what I'm saying. The questions they ask are crazy. Who's trying to do the weed? Yeah. The. <laughs> the. Who wants to smoke meth out of a spork? Dog gets a spoon. Fucking act right. Dude, narcs are always the dude. And it was always some kid, usually that had been in school for so long and couldn't graduate school. He dropped out. And now suddenly, Remember, like he fake dropped out, but he still went to class under like an alias. You know, well, he's you back with up. like a different name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're like this dude couldn't spell his first name. Yeah, his original name, and yeah. now he's Lance. And Narch never had plans. What are you guys doing tonight? It's like yeah. you just know what you're doing on a Friday in high school. You know, but if you have to ask for plans, Narch. Narch never had plans. They got like a face tattoo that's just a henna teardrop, and you're like, is that yeah. is that a henna? He's like, <laughs> no, I got that shit blasted last night, dog. <laughs> Do you remember the first time you saw a tit out in public? I remember mine. In public, yeah, in New Orleans, you saw them all the time. That oh, was the thing yeah. at Mardi Gras. So that was another thing. You had, like, you know, high school chicks was always out there showing their tits. Adult, you'd have a, you know, uh, you'd have a 17-year-old and a 60-year-old showing their tits mm-hmm. out there, you know? Yeah, I remember I was at Magic Mountain, and uh, they had this, like, uh, or not Magic Mountain, Splash Mountain, or what's the fucking, Raging Waters, one in California? Well, the- Raging Waters? Yeah, that's the name of it. Uh, it's, it's just like a amusement park, but it's all water, right? Sea World. Sea World. Water park, I believe they call it these days. Water park. Uh, yeah, not SeaWorld, no. But it was Raging Waters, I believe. I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah, but uh, they had this, there was like this overflow of this like water that would like, Waterfall. Yeah, that would like waterfall, but like it, was, it wasn't on purpose. It was like overflow of a ride because it was like mm-hmm. a berm that like spun out and it landed on this, this like mom and it hit the left side of her, mm-hmm. her bikini. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there was tit out for like seven seconds. She, did, <laughs> she didn't even know. It was it, oh, it was crazy. Down. I was like slapping my friends bring on the back. Out, bring them out. I was like hitting people. I was like, bro, fucking. Oh, that's yeah. an unadulterated tit right oh, there. Wait, you see Organic in, re- in the wild. That's what I'm saying. God, there's something about it. Just just straight up pure tit. There's something about it. That Stumble just... across it. And here's it like the thing. a gold rush, but all over again. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with it, man. There's nothing wrong with some of age breasts. Of age breasts. You know. And she was probably. You know, low 40s. And appropriate breast. You know when breast is appropriate. Yeah. There's a time and a place. Oh. And it's often, brother. <laughs> I will say that. Thank God, brother. And that's okay. That's what God wants. Um, Are you that guy tour? Trevor Wallace. You guys go check him out, man. Yeah, man. It's going to be a good time. I'm, uh, I'm really excited. So. Yeah, thanks for getting me out of hibernation, dude. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, man. Hopefully you had a good time. And I, I really didn't know you were taking this time off. I feel bad, man. But we no, got to talk okay. about tits. 
And you getting up a lot around town out here, or is that why you're going back to L.A.? Just hit a fuck spots? Know, no, I've just been taking a break from everything right now. So I'm gotcha. going to go back to L.A. and get more sets. There you go. So that's one thing, too, that's uh, that's tough for outside of L.A. There's just nowhere to perform. You know? Yeah. There's one club. Yeah. How often you, know? you pop in there? Sometimes. Yeah. Not a ton. But even um, then, you do 10 minutes, and you're like, oh, now what? Yeah, but I've also been overall just been kind of just taking a break. Yeah. It's been kind of nice just to like. Yeah, I mean, you have to. Yeah. When you get too intense, you just burn out. You, you're like just trying to make material out of anything. And you're like, carpet's crazy, huh? You're like, what the fuck's wrong with me? Yeah. Now, the, the more you like live, the more you live a life to tell about it. I think that was something I feel like. Mm. You know, if, you, if you're not living. I, cause I remember Caruso, I was only. Caruso, I think, said that. Who did? Robinson Caruso, I think, said that. Okay. I saw it on the back of a Kid Rock t-shirt. but Do you really? <laughs> no. But uh, I, I just remember when I was first moving to L.A., all I did was open mics. I'd go to work, and then I'd do, like, three or four open mics a night, and then I would just try to just, just give. But I, like, I, I wasn't talking about anything. Right. I was just trying to be funny, but it wasn't anything personal. And then you take some time to realize who you are as a person and, and what made you you and your background and, and this and that, and uh, that's when you find the funny. Yeah. And then, and then you find your lane, and you're like, this is what I want to talk about. Yeah, I think I felt burnout for a while. I think I just got so busy working. It's natural. It you know, happens. I took on, I was doing three episodes. Of, I was just doing way too much, doing yeah. sets, touring. You know, it's just like. You just want to say yes to everything because in the beginning you didn't have that. Right. When you, when you never had nothing. Yeah. And you work so hard and then something comes along, man, you'll fucking, I'll yeah. hold on to something. Yeah, man. But now I'm kind of realizing like, hey, man, I can have a little bit of choice in what I want to do because mm -hmm. I just want to feel like myself. I don't want to be so busy or overwhelmed that I don't feel like myself. Right. That's where I've been. I think it's a, a scary while. feeling. Oh, you're like, it's you're, just exhausting. You're just looking at what the stuff you're putting out there. You're like, do I even like this? Am I doing this joke for me? Or is this just because I think it's funny? Yeah. Is this video just because I think it's going to go viral, but I don't actually give a shit about it. Yeah. Do you feel pressure to sometimes to, yeah. to create stuff? Yeah. yeah. I, it, a lot of times it's when I'm like in between touring a lot and it's like, there's like, I have like two days in town and I'm like, okay, I need to make something. Let me, uh, what's funny? What, uh, okay. This. And then it's like, did I actually want to make that or did I just rush it to put something right. out? And it shows when, when the numbers come up and it doesn't hit, I go, uh, yeah, uh, that makes sense. That checks out. But right. in the beginning, I just get pissed. I'm like, no, fuck. That's funny. Why didn't that hit? But now it's like, I get it. I go, I rushed that. Didn't need to do that. Should have just taken that week off. Yeah. And rest a little bit. But it yeah, takes time I'm to overdue. learn that. I'm overdue for a lot of, excuse me, I'm overdue for a lot of weeks off. Yeah, but I, but I think the people who support you the most would understand. They'd be like, we, we would rather have Theo at 100 than being like, here's a podcast, but I fucking, you know, I, I have narcolepsy at minute 36. Yeah. Yeah, I just, yeah, I, I, I want to I want to get back to a place where I feel really healthy. Yeah. You know? And, it's uh, natural. So. And January is weird because December is really slow, but then it's hard to go straight back to 100%. Right. I jumped right into it. Yeah. Fucking we're back. You know, this weekend it, we're back. Right. But yeah, I'm trying to just do a little bit less and just, yeah, uh, I'm all good though. Everything feels good, man. I just want to, yeah, I want to, I want to, I realize that I can take more time for myself because yeah. I want to make good stuff. I want to feel like myself. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, but man, I'm grateful to spend time with you, dude. And yeah, thanks for uh, I love you. You're one of the awesome. funniest guys, dude. Your videos Thank always you, make me laugh. Um, awesome, I've even called you Trevor Lawrence before to people. Dude. And, uh, I hope you don't stop that. And I thought your name was Trevis when I first Trevis. met you. Do I even have you saved in my phone still as Travis Lawrence? Travis Lawrence. And that sounds like a youth pastor. Yeah, and tonight at Zany's Comedy Club, maybe he will be. Now I'm just floating on the breeze And I feel I'm falling like these leaves I must be cornerstone Oh, but when I reach that ground I'll share this peace of mind I found I can feel it in my bones But it's gonna take A little time For me to set that parking brake And let myself all wind Shine that light on me I'll sit and tell you So